by a little bastard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to RRF1, the unfamiliar voice on a Friday night. Positively glad back. Well, for the first ever time I've ever streamed the Division 2 race. Uh, basically, Beer and Kebab is anyway, doing a house move. I couldn't work out the right bloody word for it. Uh, he's moving house, so I'm taking the reins for tonight. And we have got Division 2 here, ladies and gentlemen. All 20 drivers are lined up. Debutants, MD Skillen and Victor Reznov making their debut after successful track trials. Skillen actually had, um, or Skillian, had a successful track trial about eight weeks ago. And basically, has been ill and couldn't race. Um, anyway, uh, speaking of debutants, uh, we've got a new debutants in the commentary box. Hopefully he's got his audio included. Um, it's Kenzie Retro, a.k.a. Fraser, Talk of the Devil commentator. He's decided to help give us a helping hand tonight. Fraser, introduce yourself to the live audience, mate. How are you doing? Uh, doing very well, thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Fraser McKenzie here. Uh, a couple of the racers in uh, this division will know me as one of the commentators for the Talk of the Devil League. Uh, I'm, I'm the commentator for the Talk of the Devil Elite League, which runs alongside the main league on a Saturday night. I'm also a commentator for the Extreme Racing League, which Cesar Lopez, who's one of the uh, racers for our league, um, because we've got we've got this partnership with the Extreme One, the Extreme Racing League. Uh, I'm commentator for the Extreme One division, and I also race in the Extreme Two division as part of that same league. Bloody hell, um, I admit, you just came to life out of that bloody chat. <laughs> Fuck, I like this. I reckon, I reckon me and you could have a good little working relationship here. So there you go, guys. Fraser here. He's going to be helping out for tonight. And obviously, like I said, much appreciated, Fraser. We've got ourselves a full grid 20 people. We've got Victor Reznor, Vulcan, Tomster, Jono, Scotty, Jackie Cole, Bishop, Dan Pennell, Andy B, a base, Skillian making his debut, of course. Dragoon, Bob, Muhead, PTR, Discreetly, Rara, Ben Prem, Anston, and King Chris. And breathe, boss. Oh, God, I shouldn't do that as asthmatic, should I really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, mate. Um, so, obviously, Fraser, this is your first time in RF1, mate. It's going to be probably your new experience for you. You're teaming up with a streamer who really um, has no shits to give, which is rather a, an interesting mannerism of life. We've got Sneaky Wolf in the chat there, mate. Here we go. Thank you very much, Sneaky. Welcome back into the chat. Um, if you want to, Fraser, if you want to watch along, mate, as you go, um, obviously keep in tune with the chat. Uh, live on Positively Glad on Twitch. It's on the page on our phone if you want a little blast. If not, matey, let's buckle up and enjoy three qualifying sessions and 31 laps of hopeful, well, hopefully not carnage, but for you guys watching incidents galore. First lap of his RF1 career is Victor Reznov coming down towards Turn 1 in at the Alfa Romeo. We do a combined constructors here, Fraser, by the way. So every mm -hmm. single point earned by each individual team stacked for all three leagues end up with a winning medal at the end of the season, obviously, for the... But basically, every single thing. We fo really focus on constructors individually for each league. It's all literally composed and compelled together and combined into a full combined constructors, just simply to give all the guys something to kind of show up for, work for, and kind of work from there. You've just obviously followed me, because you're actually just following me now. Cheers, matey. God, I'm giving you a shout-out start of the stream and you get another one right here um right there, obviously i know you've been doing a lot of commentary i'll yep. give you your chance to shine fraser um let us know what your thoughts are on the single world track what do the guys have to look out for what are obviously the kind of killer points on the track and what would you really where would you really advise you overtaking points mate just give us an overlay of what you think the track's like well of course well of course one of the main uh, overtaking points to look out for is uh, of course the run down to turn one and uh, we've seen our fair share of first corner incidents over the course of uh, the history of the Singapore Grand Prix. Every single Singapore Grand Prix we have had has had at least one safety car at some point during the race, and uh, none more so than the uh, spectacular race start uh, in 2017, which involved both Ferraris of Raikkonen and Vettel, and of course the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Probably one of the most memorable crashes of all time, obviously, as everybody realised, it was actually Seb's fault. Um, <laughs> just to kind of stir the pot there for the Ferrari lovers. Um, so, who have we got on track at the moment? We've got, I believe, a base. Oh, Victor Reznov did actually have a lap there, 1 minute 38.3. I did notice he was kind of going a little bit slow during the lap. Evening, Ralph and Big Harry Jock. Welcome into the lobby tonight, guys. Welcome to the chat. Enjoy what you see. So, who have we got going on? We've got... Oh! I believe Dan Pennells is giving up his lap. He's coming into the pits. I hope we'll be having another run a little bit later. Obviously, the way Q1 works, for those of you who are new to the sport, Bob with the 1 minute 36-0. That is rather a nice lap there. 
and a base goes immediately into second place. Two guys who are still in with a shot of the championship. Ben Prime, of course, is 105 points clear. Bigger margins have never really been caught, but of course, anything can happen in Grand Prix racing. And as you've got two people in commentary who have been dubbed Murray Walker in the past, it usually does. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be an interesting one tonight, though, Fraser. Absolutely. I've often said about any sport, it's a very unpredictable place, and as you've said, anything can happen. I'm, uh, I'm watching Vulcan right now in uh, the Renault. He's uh, just midway through the second sector right now. He's definitely keeping it under control. He's uh, definitely set, looks like he's got some speed. Slightly wide on the uh, left hander down the back straight, but uh, able to pick up for that without much difficulty. Hitting the apex, very, very tricky corner. This very easy to run a little bit wide there. And of course, the game does like to throw a couple of curveballs in terms of track extensions, etc. This is another really tricky place here. Singapore, one of the worst tracks in terms of what you would imagine not being able to cut the corner and then actually given, being given a five or ten second penalty because the game is just absolutely fantastic as we are right now. Co-Masters, thank you very much for the sponsor money. Um, maybe I can take over your development of the game maybe in six years and make one that isn't. Entirely broken. Uh, Anstan just went into third with a 1 minute 37.3. Let's have a look at Vulcan. He pretty clean that 1 minute 37.4. So Bob the Refugee absolutely aches in front at the moment. MD Skillian here, Fraser. His first ever Grand Prix. The last time, give you a bit of a brief history on Skillian. The last time I raced with him was back in F1 2013. He was actually my teammate for four races before obviously we parted company and then just ended up going our own separate ways with different leagues, etc, etc. Um... So Skillian, obviously a very, very experienced league racer. Had a bit of time off, though. Um, come back with a flurry in Canada, having a very, very, very eccentric trial in the way. One of the first people who've actually passed the trial on the first attempt. Um, we usually give about two or three goals, you know, just to kind of obviously give people like different goals on different track layouts. But with a track like Canada, to avoid getting penalties for the most part, avoid collisions, avoid the carnage that did actually ensue in that race. Um, he pretty much smashed it all in one go. So at the moment, we have currently got eight people to set a time. The bottom five go out. Uh, surprisingly, Fraser, we've not actually seen any retirements yet, which in F1 2019 is somewhat of a, a unique experience. Um, obviously, the Fraser, you mentioned obviously your credentials at Talk of the Devil. Um, obviously, you've been doing this for quite a long time. You, you seem, to be honest, mate, you seem pretty clued up in your knowledge of the sport. Um, obviously... Um, what are your might as well get your thoughts on the race this weekend? Obviously, I've not seen any of the practice. Um, what about, do you think Hamilton will be able to get the job done this week? It's probably going to take a minor miracle for him not to win it in general. But what are your thoughts on that, Seth? Well, with the fact you only need eighth place for the championship, it's uh, it's his championship to lose <laughs> at, at this point. It's a case that it's basically the same position Vettel was in last season, that uh, he needs, that Bottas needs Hamilton to DNF all the races from here on out and that Bottas needs to win all the races and ideally get the fastest lap at the same time. Which, obviously, especially with some of the tracks coming up, is going to be an absolute tall order, really, isn't it? I mean, it's literally a case of Bottas almost praying for a wormhole to open up and suck Hamilton in for the last three races, along with the other 18 cars, really, isn't it? But, I mean... Crazy things have happened in Formula 1, obviously, you know, it's going to be an intriguing way to end the season. We've currently got King Chris, who is in 7th and 8th for the McLarens right now, currently leading the combined constructors of the Toro Rossos and the Alphas, but however, the Red Bulls starting to come along very strong towards the end of the season too. Um, let's have a look at who's in the comment. Uh, Bob says, am I lagging? Honestly, mate, I've not been on your car, to be fair to you. Uh, we'll, obviously, we are in a position, if someone's lagging too much, we'll... we'll pull them in and basically if Dragoon's watching the stream you're in a Ferrari because you were guessing in Division 3 last night. Um, so here we go then a very 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 interesting qualifying so far PTR actually come out on the softs which is a bit a medium sorry which is a bit of an unusual one I'm guessing just trying to get a bit of a banker lap here we've got a yellow flag in Sector 1 I believe that is a slow car up ahead can't quite catch you that is I believe it's the Williams potentially I think that's the Williams of is it no it's not the Williams who is it it is the Toro Rosso, I believe that is Jono going very slow, so he was on his flying lap. Jono, if I'm correct, has a bit of wing damage there, Fraser, so it's going to be an intriguing one to see if he can get back in the pits and re regain his kind of composure there. So, aye, right, this is where we are looking right now. Okay, welcome in to the comment chat, guys. We've currently got ourselves 22 viewers, 21 currently banking as we speak. Thank you so much for watching. If it's anything like last night's race, then you guys are in for an absolute fucking treat. Um, in a nutshell, Fraser, if you didn't watch it, mate, we had mm -hmm. ourselves three different leaders on the last lap. 
Uh, <laughs> um, a back marker crashing into the wall, uh, which then enabled someone to go from last to first, which is rather amazing. King Chris, thank you for the six months subscription renewal, buddy. Thank you so much, my man. Much love to you. Next time, um, be sure to uh, get to 900 power on Destiny. We'll leave that there. I think you just got it. Um, we'll move on from that. Uh, Muirhead then, currently going around Sector 2. I believe we've got a couple of guys in Sector 3. We have. We're going to go on board with Dampanels. And they're followed very closely by Andrew Byrne. Renault versus Mercedes here tonight. Here comes Danny P. What can he do? Dan, this doesn't look like the best lap in the world. He's got himself in with the 1 minute 39 one, so at least it is a time set. And I believe that was someone else following around straight after the Rara or PTR, I think. Was it Rara? Yeah, Rara into 8th. Andrew Byrne immediately pushes him down to ninth and moves into 7th. Very, very close competitive times here, Fraser. Literally 2nd mm -hmm. down to ninth, one second apart at the moment. But however, there's only a couple of tenths in it. I believe that's Muirhead. Very impressive display there by Muirhead. Currently gets himself in with a 1 minute 37.2. What would you say then uh, the cutoff will be in your own estimation based on the times we've seen them, Fraser? Hmm. Uh, my estimations, uh, probably probably looking somewhere in the region of probably 138 at least to be able to uh, comfortably get through into the uh, next part of uh, qualifying. And uh, I just saw come up on the screen there that uh, Bob the Refugee has uh, retired from the session. Uh, I think that's just a case that he's more than happy with his lap time and he's not going to be taking any further parts until the second part of I qualifying. Think Bob definitely safe, isn't he? Bob definitely safe through in that case, to be fair. Bob's had himself a cracker. Jackie Cole moves into second place in the Haas driver. Ironically, my combined constructors teammate there, Jackie, we've got the screen. They come, they come around. He's gearing up for a second run. Jono is the man on the mission right now. I believe he is coming through Sector 2. Yep, the hairpin by Sector 2. And through comes Jono. Then we'll, let's see how competitive his time is in comparison. So basically, to get yourself safe at present time, you do, as Fraser mentioned, have to break the 1 minute 38. I think for the guy, he's still have to set a time. That's going to be a common recurring theme there. So here we go. My lap had no ERS. A base had no ER. Was it ERS or DRS? I can't even tell. ERS. And he still managed to get a 1 minute 37 0. That is mightily impressive there, a base. Cracking little lap time there. Jono gets himself round the final complex of corners into the final corner. Almost a slingshot corner. How would you enter it as your own guys? You've just got to make sure you get on the power. Avoid riding over the final curve. And Jono puts himself in second place with a 1 minute 36.8. Bridging the gap closer to Bob the Refugee. And speaking of bridging the gap to... Oh yeah, sorry, it was a <laughs> tally correct. His brother saying it was DRS, not ERS. Uh, ben Prime then, championship leader. 105 points, Fraser. He has been an absolute machine. This is a guy you do have knowledge of. Out of the few guys that you do have knowledge of, obviously being literally brought in in, in almost the 11th hour, wasn't it really in that case? But Ben Prime, um, former Talk of the Devil racer, he is currently coming around Sector 2 then. Ben has been an absolute machine this season, um, not putting basically a foot wrong while others have. No matter where he's qualified, he's always managed to find himself. I was a little bit scruffy through Sector 2 there from Ben. Always managed to find himself in challenging positions, no matter how bad it has been. Well, I've often said that uh, consistency is key, and uh, even if you can't, even if you can't manage to rack up wins on a regular basis, um, uh, Callum Harrod, uh, who's one of the Talk of the Devil races, uh, defending champion for the Talk of the Devil League, uh, he was very consistent throughout his um, throughout the first season of the league, uh, getting podiums pretty much the entire season, all the way through and managed to wrap up the championship in uh, Japan and uh, he dedicated uh, his championship win to uh, his grand who had uh, uh, passed away uh, before the race. Honourable, honourable cause of course. Um... Tell you what, mate, is when you've got something to race for, it's a lot more difficult. I've been there before. Ben Prime actually lost a bit of his wing there. Um, yeah, and despite that, that... Literally come around the final corner. Still yeah. 36 8. <laughs> yeah, so I was about to say, despite that, he's got, he sets a very good lap time there. That'll definitely see him through. Should pretty much... Oh, Scotty's gone into the wall. That's not ideal. Um, not really the ideal line for this, Scotty. Straight into the wall. He'll be coming back in, but I don't think he's got enough time to go back out. He's going to have to absolutely fly around here. King Chris just behind him, manages to get through. We're going, we're going on board with, I believe, Discreetly is behind Chris on track. So we'll go to King Chris now, who is coming across. Of course, King Chris had one of the most emotional victories in RF1's history in Baku. Um, 
our New Zealand born racer and he's currently floating through the floor so that's not exactly uh, intriguing um, <laughs> not the ideal trajectory there for Chris I mean you want to kind of stay on the on the <laughs> on the track preferably Chris with a pretty that's going to be a big improvement for Chris it was actually a woman at 37.3 but invalidation causes him there to obviously throw away the lap unfortunately um, here we go then <laughs> tally um, so here comes discreetly then Let's see what this can do. Obviously, multiple time podium sitter and former, he guessed in the division one a few times. One minute 37.264 just squeezes, just squeezes up the Sixth there. place. That is, a, that is a great lap time. You get sixth place. That should hopefully see him through. You'd imagine so. Um, obviously, breaking the 38s is looking kind of imperative here, Fraser. I mean, look, literally, everyone outside the bottom five he has broken the one minute 30, 38s there. So hopefully, we can bag it ourselves. An interesting end to the qualifying. Two minutes, 30, two minutes 30 to go just under Bishop then, who has been showing quite a bit of pace in the time trial. Um, whether the time trial can kind of switch over towards the race itself um, is obviously going to be another matter. Let's see what Bishop can actually do here. Scotty has come back into the pits. He's going to need to go immediately out or Scotty will be starting from a P20. I think he's just going to be able to get out. I believe it is Tomster actually. Forgive me. Tomster coming around. Just in front of Bishop, we're going to get on board with Thompson just to kind of watch his lap time here. Will Thompson be able, he's the closest challenger to Ben Prime. He is the guy 105 points behind. He'll need to beat Ben in every single race. Here comes Thompson. 1 minute 36.8024, one hundredths of a second quicker than Ben Prime. His biggest championship rival, PTR. And Rara, built, well, Rara starting his lap. Let's go back to Bishop quickly. Where will Bishop be able to feed in? Will he be able to break through? Out of the top, into the top 15, should we say, out of the drop zone. Here comes Bishop. Will he be able to do it? He goes into 15th place. Just. Ben has John retired literally by the skin of his teeth. That, I don't think that's going to be safe for him, you know. There are a couple of guys improving yeah. around track. Skillen, one of them, Skillian, is seven tenths quicker. So that is literally going to be able to put him into P13. Will mm -hmm. he be able to keep up the consistency and keep it going? <coughs> Goodness me, why not actually try and... Um, not choke on my own spit would be ideal, wouldn't it? Um, here comes Skillian. What can he be able to do here? Coming around the final complex of corner. Skillian, 1 minute 38.1. He looks like he's going to absolutely smash that here. Well, I say absolutely smash it. He's not had the best end to the lap. And he does actually put himself in a P9. So P9, Skillian, you'd imagine he'd be safe there. Still got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8 more people. So he could theoretically here for us to still get knocked out if all the people behind him can improve their lap times. Um, so we've got, we've got, who have we got coming closest now? We're going to focus more on Rara, Rara from Rara. From Division 3's champion at last season at base. I believe he thinks he's done enough mathematically. I believe he nearly has done. I think there's only a couple of guys who can knock him down. One, two, three. Yep, he is pretty much safe. That one minute 37.0. Rara, a little bit loose coming around them corners. I don't think it's actually going to be enough for Rara here. It's going to be very close, and it's not. Rara has only improved by, four, by 16 one thousandths of a second. And oh, that's one of the Mercedes in the one? wall! It was Bishop! Oh, Bishop, what's happened to Bish? Bishop in the wall, Bishop and that's him out of the out. session. Oh, my God. Oh, dear, that is not good for your health. Uh, that is one mangled Mercedes there. Uh, Kai Pollock with the 578-bit donation. Thank you very much for this, sir. You are a superstar. Skillian retires. I believe he is coming to the pits and retired. That is good he's, form. Actually, I have no again, idea where he is. Again, he, um, again, he'll be happy with what he's done. King Chris manages but to stay. Goodness me, yeah. We still have. <laughs> oh, thank goodness me, that was, a, the that, was a, that was a scary crash. incident from uh, Bishop. But hopefully Not he's okay. What really kind of. Not idea. Yeah, I think we'll have to phone in the Singapore doctors to come scrape him off the wall. PTR not quite good enough. PTR only th he's three temps off qualifying. We've got Dan Pell and Scotty. Pete is gone. Both Williams drivers are out, keeping the realism going there. To be fair, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Scott Scott is the only driver not to set a lap time on track at the moment. Hopefully, he gets something he's in. He was a little bit loose around there, Fraser, at the moment. Rara, of course, Rara is still actually going for another lap here, so Rara could potentially move up. He does need to find six tenths of a second to make sure he secures it. So it's let's see, Dan Pennells. Dan Pennells is coming round. This doesn't look like it's going to be good enough for Danny, but you think it will be a personal improvement. And he is, he goes 16th place, just beats PTR, but just misses out on qualifying for the next session. Here comes Scotty. This is, Scotty's not got through. Scotty's 20th. He's not going to make it. Yeah, he's going to start at the back of the grid. He's going to be at the Division back of the two grid. two champion from last season. And Rara misses out again. Rara did a second lap and he's one-tenth of a second off. 
drama at the end of Q1. And we're only at the end of fucking Q1, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ, imagine what's going to happen at the end of Q2. Jesus Christ, you'll be getting paused on a fucking oxygen mask. Um, anyway, top 15 <laughs> are through. Rara. <laughs> Rara. <laughs> Rara, PTR, Bishop, of course, who crashed off. Scotty and Dan Pennell's your five drivers out. Uh, by the way, Victor Reznov there almost unsightedly moves into second position in the Alfa Romeo. Both Alphas showing a really, really strong showing here around Singapore, at least obviously for the moment. Obviously, we know there is a long way to go in this weekend, of course, as we call it a weekend. It's Friday. Friday's the beginning of the weekend. Bite me. Uh, obviously, then you've got Vulcan Thompson, Ben Prime, Andy B, Jono, Jackie Cole, a base Skillion, doing well on his debut, discreetly, Muirhead, and Stan Dragoon, and King Chris making it through by one tenth of a second with a Rara Dampinel's PTR Bishop, and the aforementioned Scotty really, really struggling here. Scotty, Division 2's champion last season. I believe he came second position to Thompson in last season's race. And he says, just where he wants to be, person, I'd rather be in the lead, but um, I'll leave that there for you. Um, we'll move on from that. Um, Q2 then, obviously, once again, same principle applies. Top 10 go through, bottom 5 go out. And, of course, what we don't know is if there's going to be any rain in this session, or, of course, across the whole this weekend. The great thing about this whole thing that we do, the way we do it, Fraser, uh, usually people don't even give away our race weather reports, nor penalties. It's literally a case of drama all the way from lights to flag, especially when people just kind of, like, crash and you know burn and <laughs> as yep. bishop kind of nearly made you pop your own eardrums with the way you reacted i like that um was if it, it wasn't and that time, i would probably be screaming myself was it, <laughs> was it the, and, the, and the fact that they're not giving away uh their strategies and like you said the the, the weather reports that adds to the unpredictable nature of this circuit because with how humid singapore is there is always that that strong possibility of rain throughout the race weekend Always in there. And the thing about Singapore, of course, when it rains, it pours. No pun intended to the name, of course. Um, Absolutely. But in terms of Singapore, it literally is, of course, as you mentioned with the humidity, as soon as you get a bit of rain, it instantly pretty much becomes a downpour. You never, you never ever have you noticed get a trickle of rain in Singapore. It is always del deluge. And obviously, we experienced that last night in the Division 3 race, which was, once again, absolutely thrilling. We had our last to first last night as well, which was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> An incredible race. Absolutely, possibly the best race we've had in terms of mental action here. We've got a base, the first car round in the Ferrari, a base still in the championship fight, of course. He will be hoping that Ben Prime has an absolute mare. Unfortunately, Ben hasn't had one of them, and if he doesn't have one before the end of the season, then quite frankly, he's going to be there. Give me one minute. Um, right, how do you... I'm going to have to do something. Just have to do something. Oh, I'll spot his name wrong. Give me a second, mate. I believe I've a chat banned somebody. I can't remember if I banned him. I don't think I have. Is it I'm saying I've banned Tomster? I think I've definitely not banned Tomster. Anyway, um, we'll get back to that in a minute. I've literally got a message for you saying Tomster. He's one of the biggest contributors on the stream usually. Uh, so I'm gonna have to. Mm -hmm. and, ah, wait, there. I can find his username out here. Um, I don't know why I've chat banned Tomster. I suppressed the wrong name or something. Ah, uh, there he is. <laughs> he's he's messaged to be fucking prick. <laughs> uh, no, Tomster, I've not banned. I've not chat banned you, mate, at all. No, Tom, I don't understand. I've clicked on your name and it's not saying anything. I don't know why it's saying that to you. Um, so let's have a look here. We'll get back to the action. So we've got a base <laughs> currently coming around. He is now, of course, this is where Fraser. Um, this is where the true strategies and true nature of the strategies here come into play. Obviously, then the top ten start on the tyres that they qualify on in Q2, and that's obviously if they do get through into Q3. And of course, if it isn't a wet start. But I'm assuming it isn't because of the amount of people that are actually going on to their specific indicated dry compound, aka the mediums, hards. And in mm -hmm. this case, the softs. Are probably a tire I'd try to stay away from around here, but obviously each one is to their own. Um, in that sense, there. Yeah, um, but of course, um, one of the big talking points heading into uh, this weekend for the Formula One is the fact that we have the official set of rule changes that are going to be taking that are going to be taking effect as of 2021 and i will say this oh they've been announced oh nice have, the 2021 this. rule changes have officially been announced so i'll see if i can get them up and uh, go through them on um, on here this evening for you folks um because uh, 
knowing me, like a, like um, like positive the glad said, like he said, um, I've been following the sport for a number of years, uh, very clued up. Uh, a base goes across the line, one thirty-eight four. Uh, shoot, that's a, it's a, that's a good lap for him on the, the hard tyres. Bob, Refugee, 38-3. Managed to uh, get himself just a little bit quicker again. Bob seems to have incredible pace on a fantastic Tuesday night round here. And, of course, that, obviously, Tuesday is our trial night, so it doesn't obviously mean the most. Andy B, one second further back. He's going to be disappointed with that lap time there, 1 minute 39.4. The only Mercedes to make it out of Q1, of course. John O is currently trying to warm his tyres up. People going for another lap in a second discreetly then. I'm just trying to find out the first one around track. Sector 1 and 2, we've got a yellow flag. Only one crash so far, so the guy's been pretty clean and consistent. We'll get on board with King Chris. He is in Sector 3 now. There is a car just in front of him. And that is discreetly, so we'll actually hop back across. I feel like I'm an absolute car whore tonight, hopping from car to car. Um, here we go, <laughs> that's part of my job. That's what streamers do. Um, yeah. So discreetly then, he got himself through. And we'll kind of wait for a little bit of a break in the action and be able to talk a little bit more about the rule changes. Obviously, the car's yep. looking very, very different here. Given a lot of contrasting thing, kind of views on them. Uh, the front wing I'm not a fan of, but then the actual car layout I really, really like. Very, very sleek looking discreetly. That isn't the most ideal lap time. Uh, King Chris, a little bit better. Yeah. That's it, but I will admit, overall, as far as the overall design of the car is concerned for 2021, I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> That's what I mean, there's so many different, it's spouted, literally on that phrase, there's such an amazing contrast of opinions, and such an amazing amount of things saying like, oh my god, the wheels look like dustbin lids. Me, mate, I think the wheels make the car look better. They need, well, to, if you look going that far to the ground, it's, you almost need that sort of sleek look, Victor Reznov, 1 at 39.9 invalidated. Flick over quickly to Muirhead. Yeah, he must have, yeah, Victor Reznov must have had a track infringement uh, somewhere uh, during the lap. Um... One of the one of the big one of the big rule changes that I'm very intrigued by is the um, is the uh, spending restrictions that the teams are going to have for the 2021 season onwards. They they're not that as far as the how much they spend on the on track performance is concerned. Their budget is 175 million dollars per team, and that's not including things like marketing wages, sponsorships, and whatnot. To be fair, it's a nice change, actually. I think the kind of goal is with it is to try to basically phrase and make everybody almost make it a level playing field or make people... But then at the same time, I kind of understand why they've done that. It's obviously trying to, as we mentioned, trying to... Victor Reznor has made another invalidated lap time, by the way, there. Kind of go back to the action one second. Uh, ben Prime yeah. coming through sector one. And Stan also through sector one will go back on to Victor Reznov. Um, obviously, it's quite it's quite beneficial, you know, to the smaller teams potentially, as, you know, the big teams won't be able to just pump in billions and billions of pounds if they, obviously, they don't spend that much. But, you know, theoretically speaking, mm -hmm. you know, it gives the smaller teams something better to work on. But at the same time, the little teams probably can barely scrape together $175 million in general across the course of the season. So it comes with a double-edged sword there, really. But it'll be interesting to see how the development Let's go from that as we've got Victor Reznov coming around the final corner. This is looking like a bit of a battle lap. That is a battle lap. And he gets there. He gets third. Six. Fantastic lap. Yeah. 38 Very nice six. lap there on the hards. Bloody brilliant, in fact. Let's have a look here. And, uh, and Bob's Williams response. Bob's just responded to his own best lap, a 38-2. A third lap on them tyres and he can put in a lap like that. I mean, I know it does take a couple of laps to kind of get the tyres up and running. And that's a quality good start there. Who've we got here? Jackie Cole moved into with a 39-1. That was on his first lap as well. Thompson just starting his lap. Ben Prime. We're going to go on board with the champ. Ben Prime again, or the championship leader, shall we say. You never know. We may be saying that about him next season. Obviously, Fraser, I know you'll be looking for a... You try to get yourself in for a trial. Sprain your ankle. I've heard you a little bit better now, matey. So hopefully you can get back full on the mend, yeah. of course. Um, <laughs> of course, Fraser would have been yeah. trialling with us. Uh, never know. We may have been racing him a particular day of, his, of our league as well. So you never know. Yeah. Skill, uh, ben Prime then. Final couple of corners. He's seen some pretty quick lap times here. And Comes across the line. 39-0. Zero. I'm not sure if he'd be happy with that. And stand 39-1. One tenth. He's got the same lap time as discreetly. <laughs> Quota Michael Schumacher, Villeneuve, and Frentzen, 1997 Harath. Check it up, guys, ah, if you haven't yes. seen it. All three guys, same lap time to the thousandth. How that is physically yeah. possible, it happened, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, the only, it's the only time in Formula 1 history that we've had a three-way tie for the fastest lap in qualifying. But, of course, 
Who started on pole uh, for the race? It was Jacques Villeneuve because he set the lap time first. That's how we do it. And however, it's a little bit confusing because Antstan set it second and is currently ahead of the screen. That's one thing that I think the game needs to improve on. Just kind of trying to, if two people get the same lap time, as rare as it is, mm -hmm. even though it seems to happen a lot in RF1, to be fair, we always used to seem to kind of have this. Thompson coming around, of course. Uh, here we go, the Fraser. We've got the guys, if you have a look on there, they are beginning to change over onto the medium compound of tyre. So we're beginning, going to be seeing some pretty quick lap times are being set. Big improvements coming up. You'd imagine Thompson, Thompson. Comes, Thompson comes across the line, 38-9. That puts him fifth for the moment. Look how close the field is, literally from 5th to 12th, 3 tenths of a second. Or 4 tenths, sorry, forgive me, mathematics was never my strong thing, uh, clearly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as I ju as I just in the, just in the, uh, the, the stream chats, the, uh, Dave Noble, big shout out to you, uh, said, game changer. I mean, now what, now, what could, now what that could be referencing, whether it was uh, in reference to us talking about the rule changes, or uh, talking about the on-track action. Uh... Uh, probably Gaffney's bottle, bottle flip. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I think it's, it's one of the three. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Oh, our, chat, our chats in RF1, mate. They'll, they'll, be enough to, they'll be enough to stain the devil, I'll tell you. Uh, Sk <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. Uh, seriously, we've had some wild chats. Skillin is not, Skillian, sorry, is not happy with his medium lap time coming back into the pits. Not a good I sign think... there for the second McLaren driver. I think at this point he might try and go for a lap on the softs. I wouldn't really want to do it, but I mean, as I said, I'm not the one racing. I'm just the big mouth in the commentary box. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I back up my um, action uh, to, on Sunday night in Division 1 when I consistently come 19th place. Um, true fact, by the way. Um, so <laughs> here comes Andy B looking to improve from a 1 minute 38.9 Andy's been struggling in recent weeks uh, not fulfilling his own potential um, kind of letting a couple of on track incidents get the better of him uh, a lot of times you're just going to kind of let this stuff kind of wash over your head and just basically move move on from there as we see Andy come for the first second I believe he was quite a bit up on his time let's have a quick look here after the to the stream I believe it was Three just over three temps, forgive me guys, I did miss that. I was um looking at the chat briefly. I'll go back to paying attention to what I'm supposed to be paying fucking attention to. Um so here comes Andy Comfrey Sector 2, the old Singapore sling. I preferred this layout to it. As the other one probably give me vertigo driving it to be fair, wouldn't it? Um so but Andy B coming through, then sector two. Let's see how far he is up on his time. A one minute thirty eight point two to beat to set the top time, but in terms of that, I'm not sure what you'd be doing here. Seven tenths of a second, that's good enough at the moment for P1. Obviously, everyone else does need to come through. Yellow flag in sector one. I think it would be another car, let another car through. Let's double check here, Andy, coming through the tight complex in sector three. So, Andrew Byrne, Mercedes driver, his first full season in RF1, joined in USA last season, come up with a podium finish on his debut. Not had many of the highlights to shout about since. I'm obviously looking for a push to be considered into the Division 1 raffle for next season. This comes down the final corner and he goes fast. That's nice he for now. Comes the final corner. What a lap Great time. That will definitely see him through. Great stuff. And, uh, be, hopefully. Um, and I, I, was, I, was right about, I was right about Skillian going up to the soft tyres. Yeah, well, oh, he's actually gone onto them. He has actually well, I guess if he gets a piff, oh my god, that's a risk for the race, but you never know, maybe he knows something we don't. Um, it, was uh, it, UK Vulcan. Was it, I, mean, I mean, on paper, it is going to mean that Skilling is going to be, if he makes it into the top 10, that is, it means he will be, it'll be, he'll be on a shorter stint than anybody else in the top 10 for the first stint. Needing to obviously perform miracles to be able to come back through. If it's a two-stop, it'll be interesting to see. Vulcan goes and puts himself in a P1 as well. Vulcan, one minute 37.4, knocking Andy B immediately off top spot. Muirhead goes in the P3, one minute 38.0. That will be intriguing to see if that's going to be enough for him. I think that may be probably Fraser the cutoff point, I'd say, in this qualifying session, uh, based on what everyone else has kind of done. Everybody, barring Skillian, has gone out on the medium tyres, so we're all going to be going to mediums. So yeah, so I'm, yeah. So I'm, I'm just so sticking. I'm just sure. sticking with. Um, I'm just sticking with Skillian at the moment. Uh, 
there's a, there's a lot of traffic in the way. Some people on outlaps, some on flying laps, some people coming back into the pits. Um, so he's you need to be very careful and uh, try and avoid the traffic as much as he can. We are flagging sector three. Um, we're currently on board with a base. Um, he's one of the top guys at the moment. Was second position on the hard runs. Let's see if he can translate that into a second or maybe even a higher position for the medium runs. That's a fantastic lap. One minute 36.6. Fraser, that is eight bloody tenths of a second quicker than Vulcan. That is a statement. That right there is a statement of intent by a base. He's saying, listen, Ben Prime, you are over 100 points coming in the championship. I don't really give a toss. I'm coming for that title if it fucking kills me. And let's see where Jackie Cole, who's coming round, he is on his fire. He's 1.1 seconds clear. Jackie's going to be at least in the 37s here. And does get himself in a 1 minute 37-0. Pretty accurate prediction. He goes into P2. Four tenths behind a base, though. King Chris has just done his lap, 1 minute 38.2, that would have been good enough for P7, but it was invalidated, Chris is going to have to go again, and you've got to be careful though as well, Fraser, this is going to be his last go, you know, you don't want to burn these tyres off, because obviously it's going to take a lap off your stint, which means it's going to be another lap on the hard tyres, if that's the way they're going to go, obviously. Discreetly Absolutely. Comes around, puts himself now discreetly. And he doesn't make it. Discreetly he's out. Make discreetly's gone. He did a one minute thirty six point seven. That would have been good enough for second place, but he's out. Invalidated. Anstan does put himself in a second. One minute thirty eight point eight. Any of these guys can get through here, barring dis discreetly, who is who is out, of course. Uh, <laughs> putting the obvious out. Uh, Bob the refugee has been the pace setter. Fraser all the way through this session. Can he continue it on? Bob the Refugee in the Alfa Romeo. This is looking good and it's straight on to top spot. Half a second quicker than a base. One. Half a second. Absolutely whopping lap. And we've just seen a their similar Ben time Prime. To what he put, a similar time to what he did in the first part of qualifying. And Skillian does make it into the top 10 shootout for now. He's for the moment, of, I was about to say Victor Reznov. Victor Reznov goes into P5, knocks him down another place. There are four drivers who have something to say about that potentially. Dragoon on the medium tyres. I believe, no, Tops has pulled it in. Both racing points are out. Jono is out. Only Dragoon and King Chris, they're the only two. So basically everybody from Vulcan up up, which means Skillian. Skillian on the soft is safe. Tire. He's made He's it into safe the, on the softs. On the soft, so it's going to be an intriguing one, mate. On both debutants, both in the top 10. Victor Reznov, fifth, Skillian, seventh, Dragoon. Gets through Dragoon with a 1 minute 37.6, and that is him through. Andrew and, Bird uh, makes King it Chris through. King Chris is in the pits. King Chris is coming Chris to the pits. Chris has pulled it. P15 for King Chris. Literally, P15, King Chris says in the chat, invalid. And he did a 1 minute 38.2 as his best lap, which would have been good enough for, only for 12th position, but obviously, improvements can happen. Uh, Bob's keeps saying he thinks he's lagging. Um, so we can't see if he is or not. At the moment, he's currently going about four miles an hour, so it's not really an issue if he is lagging or not. And here comes the inevitable AI pileup between uh, Bob and Ben, uh, the proverbial flower pot men, if you're going to be changing that round, of course. <laughs> That's brilliant. <really. laughs> so, Dragoon. Now, Dragoon, by the way, um, we give him a little trial race, Fraser, in Division 3 last night. He's been struggling a lot in Division 2. We wanted to try and give us... He, Dragoon was the second ever race winner in Division 2 last season after myself in Bahrain in Season Ooh. 1 for Division 2. And he's just lost, seems to have lost all confidence, mate. So we give him a little try out in Division 3. Didn't have the cleanest race. This is going to do wonders for his confidence. Dragoon qualifies in ninth. So the guys eliminated are Muirhead in the Haas. Literally missing out by four tenths of a second. Then we've got Tomster, Jono, Discreetly and King Chris all on the hards who did do laps but all invalidated their times. Discreetly, probably for the most of these guys will be incredibly disappointed. That is lap time would have been good enough for P4. Andrew Byrne thanking his lucky stars that the four of those guys basically didn't get through. I'm actually going to leave Fraser with you with the guys. Um, I'm just going to go for a quick cigarette and make sure my little ones settle down. I'll be back in two minutes, matey. The voice of Fraser coming up. Uh, I was going to say the house of Fraser, but that's a that, that wouldn't really work, would it? Um, obviously, I've got uh, it's a, fine. A it's fine. Right, <laughs> right matey. I'm back in just over two minutes. Righty ho. Uh, so yeah, we're, so yeah, we're stuck with me for um, for the next few minutes. Uh, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the group chat, uh, the the stream chat right now. Uh, Big hairy jock saying dragoon for the win. So. Uh, it looks like someone's predicting that Dragoon will win the race. 
So here we go, we're into the top 10 shootout now. Who is going to start on pole position? It looks like we've got a few of the drivers coming out already. One of the Ferraris, one of the Red Bulls as well by the looks of it. Uh, Victor Reznov coming out as well. Uh, we've got both Alphas out. Uh, Skillian in the McLaren. He's out on track. Um, I'll say both Alphas. A base. He's the, that's the Ferrari that's out. Uh, ben Prime. He is out on track as well. Very interesting to see how this part of qualifying uh, plays out. So, um, so uh, for, that, for those that are watching the stream right now, uh, you can let me know, you can let me know uh, what are your thoughts on the rule changes that have been announced for uh, 2021. Uh, Dragoon, the only driver not out on track at the moment. He'll probably be waiting until towards the tail end of this, uh, this part of qualifying to get to get a um, to get a good lap time in Oh, that's a uh, King Chris. Wonder if anybody's looking for a two. That is actually a very valid. That that is a that is an interesting point. And uh, Sig Zaney, uh, rule changes are blessed. Sounds like he's a fan of the rule changes. Um, and uh, one of the other things is, um, on top of the budget that they've got, $175 million to spend on on-track performance, uh, there's also going to be like a res there's also going to be restrictions on how much development they can make on the car throughout the season as well, which should also help with closing the gap between the front and the back of the grid. On top of the uh, on top of um, a limited amount of uh, wind tunnel um, testing as well. Wrong bloody ear. There we go, we're back. Uh, <laughs> on board yeah. with Victor Reznov here. All right, so let's see what Victor can do here. He's in his debut race in RF1, no pressure around here, so he couldn't have asked for a debut run any more of a kind of kind, loving, unforgiveful track like Singapore. Um, I could probably think of Monaco as being a rival to it. Uh, a base with a woman at 36.3, immediately pretty much setting the pace there. Are we gonna, I believe we're going to probably see some lap times with the woman at 35s. You'd imagine yeah. here. Let's see what Victor can do. Let's get the timing screens up on this here. Everyone's obviously going to be on soft tyres. And there you go. Ben Prime, 1 minute 36, 3, 0, 6. Victor Reznov. 37, 3 for Victor Reznov. Jackie Cole, 1 minute 36, 7. Quick fire lap times coming in here. Andy Byrne coming around now. Will he be able to beat Victor? At least get himself in a P4. 40 views, ladies and gentlemen. And he does. He goes 1 minute 36.6. And stand then. He's had pretty much more poles than anyone else in this league this season. And Stan usually pulls and he off the does quite a good job eight. here, fifth position. He'll be, I think Amsterdam will be happy with this. He's openly said Singapore's not his favourite track. So we've got other guys coming around on their outlaps now. Bob the Refugee, the man to watch it would seem. He's topped every single time in sheet so far. Um, so can he be able to make it the hat trick? And that is Bob cutting the corner there. That's not the, probably not the line that the racing line would give you uh, to take. I mean, you know. To be fair, at least not on my one, does anyway. Um, you know, this game sometimes does give out different lines, but we'll leave that there. Bob coming around now to, come to start his lap, or is he going to be coming into the pits? No, he's going to be going for it, so we're going to go on Bob. Bob, that's a new one, on board with Bob. <laughs> Get my words right. Let's see what Bob can do. So we're going to do a TV pod lap, something that Poz never really does, so makes the fist corner very, very nicely there. Kind of rides this apex on turn two. 
Gone. What a shot you don't ride the curve too deep in a turn three. Runs a little bit wide into four. As we go round this particular corner, entering the DRS straight now. Don't want to ride the curve. Got to be very careful going round here. Very nice lap there from Bob. Goes straight into DRS now. Flat out reaching speeds of pretty much 200 miles an hour. If you have the downforce, these guys don't. So, and he's running on no ERS. So I believe that may very well be an invalidation there, Fraser, from Bob. Invalidation, I think, from Bob. He has got himself under zero ERS. So, of course, that's usually a sign with the guys that they have called the lap or pulled the lap. We have, I believe, Skillion coming round. Skillion, of course, does start on the soft tyres, so he'll want to be as high up the grid as possible here. Especially yeah, to definitely give himself not as something much Bob would have wanted. Definitely not something Bob would have oh. wanted. Uh, and it, it means that uh, it means that's a lap wasted on those uh, soft tyres, unless he comes back into the pits and puts a fresh set on. You do get given a special set, don't you? Kind of like an almost exploratory set in Q3, just kind of one that you could just kind of piss all over and throw out the window if you want to. So I guess he's going to have to use them ones. Not the ideal way that you'd want to do it, but we'll hopefully see if Bob can come back in and get himself another lap done. Skillion then on his flying lap. What can he do? That's a very nice line there from Skillion. Seems very, very assured in his driving. This is a big pressure moment for him. Always hard coming into a league midway through the season. He's got to learn 19 other guys' driving styles. And he's got to do it quick sharp because, like I said, Singapore is not a track you want to be causing incidents round. Skillion had a perfect trial. Um, one of the three people, I believe, three people who have got into the league without needing a second trial. So big, big responsibility falls on the shoulders of MD Skillion, formerly known as Billion Scroll, for those of you who may know him from elsewhere. Uh, Bob the Refugee has left the session. That's not ideal. I'll bring him back in now. I believe he was lagging a little bit, Fraser. I think that's what the chat is indicating. So uh, we'll bring him back in and then go swiftly yeah. back to MD Skillion's lap time. Currently going through sector three, the, t the tunnel complex. How's he mm. going to make this? Obviously, one of the toughest ports. Why can't I speak tonight? I think it's because I'm sober, that's probably why. Um, Skillion <laughs> comes across the line, that's going to be a high mid-37, it it's not good enough there. Seventh. Seventh at the moment. It's, a, not... it's an okay lap time to start with. Not a bank breaker, but here comes Vulcan, who is going considerably quicker into P3. 36, 6, 1, 3, what a massive, lap time. Massive from Vulcan. Vulcan uh, posted up on the page. Oh, he didn't have game sound. Right, okay, yeah, cheers for that sake. Uh, hey, Unique Shards is here, bitches. He was involved in that absolute carnage for fraught race last night. <laughs> um, so, no game sound for Bob. That's not ideal, especially not in Q3. Like, you see, Fraser, all of these patches that the game releases, we're going to get on board with Skillion. He's come back into the pits anyway. Uh, Bishop's left. This is the problem we have, guys. When one person leaves the session, it starts kicking people out. We've got to, like, we, we usually say if people have no game sound stick with it like you know what i mean it will come back at the end of the next session unique shots didn't have any game sound throughout the whole of q3 and he did stay in and he still managed to pull in third position with his lap time last night i know unique is possibly well he is he's one of the three quickest guys in division three but still try not to leave the session guys of course as best as annoying as it is as annoying as it can be try 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 not to leave the session um, because obviously it does upset the balance of the connectivity as fragile as these game servers are all Absolutely. ready. I believe Dragoon has come out for his first flying lap. He's currently on his outlap at the moment. We'll bring I think, I think it'll probably be I think it'll probably be his only flying lap because I was saying at the start of the Q3 that he was probably going to be waiting until this point in qualifying to get a lap time in when the track is rubbered in at its best. It's a big risk though, Fraser, isn't it? Having to do the one and done situation, especially around here. 20, I believe it's 20 to 21 corners, isn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, it is a, a new guy tonight, I mean, comms, mate. It is a guy called Fraser um, from Talk of the Devil, it is, Dom. Uh, making his debut with RF1 comms. And to be fair, we got... Oh, it was actually a base that went out to do a lap. Dragoon hasn't come out on track yet. He's coming out now. Forgive me, I got the wrong Ferrari. Ah. <laughs> Not really the most ideal situation. Andy B, by the way, has set himself a quicker lap time here, Fraser. He's done a 1 minute 36.6. He's moved up to fourth place. So Andrew Byrne, unless that was actually his previous lap, and I'm going to look like an absolute dolt. Um, <laughs> Scotty said yeah. in the chat, 20th to 1st. Now, to be fair, mate, people can't exactly laugh or scoff at you because it has been done already this week. This race week is obviously this week with RF1. Shrews did it last night with an absolutely perfect drive. Imagine to come from last to first. 
Uh, no, he doesn't have Lee Qualibame. It was overturned. We got additional evidence, Lossol, that Lee Qualiban was overturned as we found out he wasn't actually in the lobby at the time. When the blue flags were issued, he wasn't in the lobby. At least that's what the proof that we ah. got given was. So Dragoon's Qualiban was overturned. So he is legitimately allowed to compete in Quali. We are not um, savages. Well, we try yeah. not to be, but sometimes it works. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Is it? And, uh, yeah. In 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 the uh, in the in the stream chat, uh, I, I was just asking the, the viewers uh, what their thoughts are. Their thoughts are on the, the rule changes for 2021, and some of them like. Some of them have said they like the rule changes. One person who doesn't like what he sees at the moment here, Fraser, you're one of your old drivers, Ben Prime, wing Ooh, completely dear. off. Wing well, off. Far, that's his qualifying he's... done. Ah, well, so he's fastest Qualified at the moment, over, and, and he's not going to... a base goes fastest. Yes, you, you called it, you, you said we were going to reach the 135s, and there you go. 30, We've got it, 1 minute 35.9 35, 35, a base. Five. Cracking lap time from a base there. The first person to break into the 1 minute 35s. We've got there, Victor... Bloody hiccups, Victor Restov coming through. Anstan, I believe, is the furthest round track, so Anstan's going to be the second guy to put in a decent lap time here. Will he be able to kind of keep it going? He's already out of DRSD regs. What well, ERSD regs, sorry, getting a bit confused there. I believe Jackie Cole's just coming to start his lap as well. Yes, he is. So Anstan comes across the line. It's going to be a big improvement, and it's P2 just missing out on the first on the top spot. Anstan got across the line. UKX Vulcan. As it stands, oh, he will Bob. have time to do another lap. As it stands, he'll Bob have time refugee. to do another lap. Bob the Refugee is breaking What's he going to do? Breaks pole 35. position. What? That is how we do, ladies and gentlemen. Bob the Refugee he takes provision on pole position. Six zero. <laughs> what? That is that how we do it. Well, in Bob, he has mate. He's come back in with game sound and come back in with an absolute corker up his sleeve. He's come back in and took pole pos provisional pole position. We still have Victor Reznov, Jackie Carl, and Dragoon. They all may have something to say about that. For furthest one round the track, I believe, is Victor Reznov. Imagine that for a debut. If he comes through and smashes pole position on his debut, I'm not sure if he'll be able to do yeah, it. Yeah, he's, really he's got 1.8 seconds to make up. He's got 1.8 uh, seconds to make up. That's a top. That's a big ask. Especially around here. Here comes so Anstan keeps going. He'll be in GP1 next season. Ah, oh, Skillian didn't have time to do another lap, so he is at least ninth, the best ninth position. Here comes Victor Reznov then. This is looking pretty quick himself and moves into P3. He goes third. Victor Reznov, Alfa Romeo 1 and on 3. The dot. Literally, I mean, there's no ones, there's no twos, there's no nines, ladies and gentlemen. 36 flat. Not often we see that in this game, but he has absolutely nailed it. And Dragoon, into P3. He, go, a, he only goes ninth. Dragoon ninth. He'll probably be happy with that, to be fair. i um, been struggling a lot recently, Dragoon. Happy to get into Q3. Here comes Jackie Cole. Will he have something to say about it? He goes fourth. He goes fourth. 36-0-2-4. That's absolutely beautiful, Mike Crackling. And is Anstan going to go again? He is not. That is qualifying over. Bob the Refugee takes pole position by four tenths of a second. Massive, massive lap there by Bob. He'll be very, very happy with that lap time. A base in P2. And Ben Prime, championship leader, guys, in P6. Ben has qualified lower than this before and got himself into win race winning positions, of course. So anything can happen in, in RF1. We've proved it. We've got a motto of RF1, what the world is watching. It's almost become a folklore for us at the moment because every single race seems to be an absolute barnstormer. And this qualifying it proves no exception. Bob, a base, Victor Reznov. What a debut Victor Reznov's having. P3, Jackie Cole, Anstan, Ben Prime, Vulcan. Vulcan's highest qualifying in RF1 as well. P7, Andrew Byrne, Dragoon, and MD Skillian with a pretty solid, but as we mentioned before, with Skillian's tyres, Fraser, he's going to be in the middle, he's going to be in the mix of this group with soft tyres, and everybody around him, you'd imagine, will be avoiding the soft tyres like the plague. 2.1 seconds separating first to tenth. It is the biggest gap in RF1 this season, barring a weather change. It just goes to show how quick Bob's lap was, and obviously Skillian and Dragoon have quite a bit of work to do to improve on their times. Fraser, not a bad little introduction for you there. You've got the drama of RF1, especially in the race to come. Rara will be the one readying up. He'll be readying up, you'd imagine, around about the 10 o'clock mark just after. Amazing here. What a great qualifying session. 
as we said, we've got the Jackie Carl fan club here watching, positively glad for a change. Usually it is beer and kebab beer, hopefully your host house move. Well, I finally managed to say the word correctly. It took me 17 goes to do it. <laughs> um, so beer and kebab with his house move, hopefully that goes smoothly. Fingers crossed he will be with us on Sunday doing the stream. All 20 guys are currently in the lobby. We are waiting and ready to roll. Vulcan, Abase, Anstan, Jackie Cole, Bob, Ben Prime, Bishop, Muirhead, Dan Pennells, Andy B, Discreetly, Jono, Dragoon, Rara, PTR, Victor Reznov, Victor Reznov, sorry, forgive me, Tomster, King Chris, Skillion, and Scotty. The world is watching you guys. Good luck, of course. Will there be rain in this race? Fuck only knows. We've not been told. I don't want to know either, to be honest with you. And that is the joys and magic of this league at the moment. If it's anything like last night's race, we, Fraser, are in for an absolute peach tonight. An absolute peach. We had three wide, four wide going into certain corners. We had moves around the outside of the final corner. Just epic moves everywhere. We had Jock bashing into the back of Gaz Burgess on the final lap. Wyburn leading the race, coming into sector three and an invisible wall wiping him out, which meant Shrews took the win. Neglects, 25 seconds up the road on lap 30. He blew up. <laughs> everything and anything and everything has happened in, this, in that race last night. And we also had a safety car, which is about the sim similar likelihood of Pangea becoming a continent before the year 3456. Um, but anyway, um, I guess it does really count. And if that happens, you guys can go back and archive this in 1,500 years' time and quote me on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, uh, but, uh, you mentioned some of the overtaking uh, points to uh, look out for on this track. Um, some of the action zones, some of the other action zones to look out for. Turn seven. Um, uh, an example of uh, an example of that the the overtake the overtake between Hamilton and Massa in uh, 2011 and then turn 13 in 2013 Massa on Bruno Senna uh, the the and the ties that we've got with us for this race it's the it's the softest of the Pirelli range the soft the C5 the medium the C4 and the hard being the C3 uh, pit stop wise. We're looking at somewhere in the region of around 28 to 29 seconds to make a pit stop, change your tyres and maintain position on the track. And obviously, depending on obviously the speed of some of the pit stops, wing damage, of course, does have an effect of that, usually throwing away about a five-second gap either way. Yep. The dreaded five-second stop-go penalties as well. We've always got to watch out for those. Mm -hmm. I know this game has thrown out a couple of really harsh ones last night, actually, costing unique shots and almost certain podium in that sense, in his way. Um, obviously, the game not being too kind on unique shots. We'll be seeing him potentially on Sunday night, but definitely, of course, back on Thursday night when we approach the Russian Grand Prix. You'll be seeing, guys, just to give you a bit of more RF1 and partner league action, you'll be seeing myself streaming at my own point of view. That is back. It is back for Singapore. Uh, that is going to be on my channel, of course, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. British time. And then, of course, we will be going on to Sunday night. As it stands, Beer and Kebab is currently streaming that. But obviously we'll wait and see, depending if he is back and rolling with Web. If not, we'll obviously update you on the RF1 Facebook page and across Facebook for those of you across pretty much all the internet now as to who will be streaming that race. Right then, from yeah. what we've seen then, basically, Fraser, um, Bob the Refugee looking infallible um, at the moment. It's going to take a major, major effort or potentially problems at the start for him to obviously lose that lead. But is there any particular people you're kind of looking into tonight and seeing how they can do? Obviously, we've got the champion Ben Prime, or the championship leader, forgive me, Ben Prime mm -hmm. in P6. Always one to watch. Obviously, I know Ben is the championship leader. Fraser, you've not been here too long. Obviously, this is your first official RF1 race. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you've watched a couple, but obviously, this is your first one being right in the thick of the action. Uh, anybody who's impressed you or anybody you think can needs to step their game up so far from what you've seen? Well, from what I've seen so far, uh, uh, as far as... Uh, as far as the pace is concerned, I mean, I'm definitely impressed with how well Victor Reznov's done for, uh, like you said, this is his debut race for this um, for this division. Uh, I'll be very intrigued to see how he um, how he does in the uh, in the race. Um, ben, uh, he'll be look he'll probably be looking for another uh, strong performance to hopefully extend his lead in the championship. Uh, but Skillion is. Skillion is definitely another one I'm going to be intrigued by, uh, with him being the only driver that is starting on the soft tyres. Everyone else is either on mediums or hards. 
it's going to be tricky, isn't it, to see. Oh, we are ready to roll. Rara's already readied up, so we are rolling. Nice, quick, quick ready up time. I like the mods. <laughs> I think Ooh, it was Rara. They are, anyway. they I believe are it was. to get started. Okay, we always have so. a set thing where an admin readies up. Rara is an admin, so hopefully he was the guy to ready up. We've got, obviously, a full <laughs> lobby of 20 cars once again here. I think it's been a few weeks in a row. We've managed to bag in the full 20 in this yeah. league, so let's go and get the telemetry and up the right way. Yeah. Ah. Oh. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, it looks like, unlike the uh, Talk of the Devil and Extreme Racing Leagues, uh, it's the formation lap. We're getting their tyres <laughs> warmed up. Because uh, with the Talk of the Devil League and the Extreme Racing League, we just go straight into the race. No formation lap. We kind of did for about, I think it was a week. Uh, guys were just taking the piss, basically, out of the formation lap. And you're driving really slow and kind of bumping each other and all. Not keeping mm -hmm. formation, you know. Hence the word fucking formation. You know, people have to stay in formation for a formation lap. What magical Stephen Hawking scientific discovery that is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, just, just common sense prevailed, hopefully, luckily. Uh, the reason why we do it is kind of just in case, you know, people are away just having like a piss break or a sig break like I do. Um, if they do miss a start, even though they'll be stuck on the grid with obviously cold tyres, it, it just gives them another couple of minutes, you know, just to kind of be able to get back to the seat, settle down. Mm. We usually only let the admins ready up. Uh, the guys, um, there's like penalties if you do it, but the guys, I, don't, I think we've given out one, two, maybe this entire season across all three divisions. And the only guys who ready up are trialists who I haven't actually managed to tell not to ready up. So the guys are incredibly well oiled and well drilled by that one there. We've got another follower here that is Ruby Noble 1992 Thank you very much for the follow there. Uh, welcome into the RRF1 family, I guess we can say. Um, we are <laughs> racking in a couple of nice few follows tonight. 36 views, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching each and every one of you. I hope we... And um, why is Thompson 12 seconds behind your head? Why um, that? Why is that? Why oh, is he's that all the way at the back. <laughs> oh, dear. He's yeah, at well, the back by himself, him and Scotty. God, that's me. And uh, <laughs> say, uh, we mentioned... Uh, so you mentioned uh, um, uh, the potential of... Uh, having uh, wing damage, um, as has so often been the case while I've been commentating. I've been uh, with the Extreme 2 races that I've been part of. I've been part of my fair share of first lap incidents, and nine times out of ten, there's always one person that ends up in the pits on the first lap getting their front wing changed. I think we had a record of... I think we had a record of nine uh, in a pre-season race. We had a ten-car pile-up at Term 1. Oh, dear. <laughs> Which somehow didn't get red flagged. I think we were just being lenient there. <laughs> so we're just waiting now for Scotty and Thompson. They are forming up on the grid. Was it Sykes uh, saying uh, Forza formation lap in the in the in the chat as well? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! Yeah. Fucking sake! Shut up. Uh, <laughs> he knows what I'm on about. Uh, here yeah. we go then. But so we are ready to roll. Here come the lights, and when they go out, it will be race time in Singapore. Great start there. Wow, that was Bob. enthusiastic. I like that. <laughs> uh, great start there from Bob. Uh, both Alphas got off to a pretty good start. Uh, Scotty's had a good start as well. Uh, oh, and Dragoon's as well. round. And Dragoon's had an round. incident already. Oh, Someone's hit the back of him. There we Not go. ideal there for Dragoon. He's got his spun already. There is somebody with wing damage further down the order. I think it may very well be Jono. Oh, the house of Jackie Cole. Pile up. That's pile up. Oh pile up on the mainstream. That stand's gone round. Jackie Cole's gone oh. round. Goodness me, it's it is carnage here. in Singapore. It's all happening here, and that's one of the Red Bulls. That's Anstan as well. Anstan. Dragoon, Jackie, oh, dearie and me. Anstan. Caught up in it. Oh, dearie me. Oh, Toro Ross has gone for an absolute send it move down the inside here. Thompson went for the move. Thompson's already up to 10th position from pretty much out of the top out of the top 15. Thompson discreetly both on the absolute march here. Like, so what uh, a great start by the racing points. And talking of being on the march, Scotty, who was at the back of the grid, he's already up into 14th place. 14th place, Jono up in a P6. Oh, Skillian's just, oh my god, I think a bit late on the brakes so here, Skillian. Very lucky to avoid wing damage there. And Andrew Bird, yeah. 8th, Merhead, 9th, Thompson, 10th. Very, very, very congested down here in the midfield here. Lap 1 in Singapore has already brought about one hell of a couple of collisions already here. And we've already got four. Well, King Chris currently down in P17, no damage sustained. It's just basically at the moment, Dampinel is also having a really, really great start from 17th on the grid into 11th place, being har harassed and hounded 
by the racing point of Discreetly, who was, oh my god, nearly ended, his, ended it all there on lap one, right in the wall. That wouldn't have been the best scenario for him, basically. Um, we've got Rara into 13th as well. Did Nick Q2 did a, Oh, Toros of Scotty, Toros of Scotty, wing damage. Hit the wall, coming out of the exit of the third to last corner. That's Andrew Burton really has gone in with a uh, five Andrew, second penalty. Uh, for speeding in the pit lane. Uh, looks like he's one of the drivers that's uh, going to be having a front wing change. Uh, and, and like, like I said at the top, like I said at the top of the race, that um, it's very easy, it's very easy for these sort of races to end up with uh, front wing damage and end up having a, a first lap pit stop. Jackie Cole is in the pits as well. And the five second as well. He had a five second Jackie Cole. Yeah. His race has and gone stand, for absolutely. And stand in the pits as well. The shit. Is it and stand in the pits as well. Dragoon, interestingly, staying out. Does he? Have, it doesn't look he like he has any front wing damage. damage. I think he got spun off as opposed to having wing damage. Um, I think uh, maybe well, he might you actually hit him then in that case. Well, he's lucky to have got away unscathed from that one, but uh, Skillian had a good start. Started 10th, and he's now up into 7th, managing to avoid all the first corner carnage. Jono has managed to clear Vulcan there. Jono up in a P5 as well. Discreetly has also got Dampels in the ensuing cluster there. He's currently chasing down his teammate. These two discreetly and Thompson have had various incidents as Racing Point teammates, but then again the driver in the Racing Point, aka the Force India, and everyone knows that Force India drivers love to hit each other. Um, <laughs> Perez and Ocon, we're talking to you. Um, Vulcan there, ah, sticking yes, within uh, reach. Yes, that, that infamous incident in uh, Belgium, if I'm right in saying? Uh, yes, and well there was multiple. I think it was Azerbaijan as well, wasn't it, when they decided to just ah, kick yes. the living snot out of each other. We're on the first couple of corners. A uh, new follow as well there. I believe that is uh, Colic. Thank you very much for the follow. Up to 7-11 followers now, guys. That's fantastic. Yeah. He gets the fastest lap, though, so beginning to kind of keep yeah. the pressure up on Bob. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, on to lap three now. DRS is now enabled. And, and for, the, uh, for those new to the sport, you can use the DRS in the DRS zone when you're within one second of the car ahead. Victor Reznov is one of those cars. Uh, he won't be close enough to overtake a base at the moment, but um, it'll be interesting to see what he can do from here, but uh, he's done well to manage, to, he's done well to keep third place off the start, uh, definitely definitely doing well to keep pace with uh, his teammate and the Ferrari ahead of him. Very, very tight battling going on down here, literally a seven car scrap here from 11th to 17th, literally Dan Pennell's all the way down to the Goon in 17th. All separated by just over three seconds. <laughs> Seven cars are in three seconds. That's pretty, that's, that's that's clickbait for you. Um, so we're going <laughs> to grab a thumbnail of. <laughs> there you go. That's done my title in. Um, nobody separated by anything more than eight tenths of a second as we currently speak. Mirhead just currently sitting in P8. Vulcan currently rocking P6. Then still keeping pace with Johnny. Johnny managed to clear him, but has not managed to escape Vulcan yet. Uh, Dragoon has had a five-second penalty exceeding track limits. And that is quite an unusual exceeding track limit penalty as he's currently driven down the escape road. I guess that's a massive advantage he's really gained there. And he has now got wing damage then. He has major wing damage, Fraser. Dragoon's race has gone from pretty decent in qualifying to absolutely piss poor um, in, a, yeah, the, in the space of just under three laps. Yeah, the sides of the, the sides of his uh, uh, front wing are uh, non-existent, essentially. <laughs> Uh, they, call, they call that the hang glider. Um, <laughs> hang glider front wing. Um, discreetly currently running yep. at the top 10 then, the two racing points. Another yep. new follow as well, M2101. Thank you very much for the follow. Yep. Rara and Bishop. Bishop goes up the inside of Rara. That is Bishop into P14 and runs about as wide as... Well, well should I just be kind of cliche and say an Emil Heskey football shot? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, everyone uses that joke anyway, so I might as well... Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, and, uh, for discreet, discreetly battles, battling his uh, teammate, battling for ninth. And, and he gets through and he forced Tops off the track then, manages to get through. Tops has not given up on it yet though, he manages to, doesn't manage to get it back. Dragoon, interesting point there, Fraser, he's not pitted. He's on the hard, he's on the medium tyre. So unless he's just trying to eke out another couple of, like, couple of laps on the tyre and then go for the hards until the end. Or if there's like it's rain a, potentially in this race, we don't know. A, but he's lost all the way. It's a big risk. It's a big risk. Rara and Dan Pennells. Rara has it's made it past Dan Pennells through the old Singapore sling. Sorry for his interrupt. Rara has done Dan Pennells through the Singapore sling. Just coming up to it. What a move that was. PTR is team running a bit wide in the background. 
that it's a it's a big risk to continue on to continue on with their uh, front wing damage because then because I've seen my fair share of I've seen my fair share of races um, league racing that um, people have actually continued on continued through the race uh, with the front wing damage and ended up crashing out as a result. Certainly is going to be a definitely, definitely a big risk, mate, for Dragoon, isn't it? Oh, nothing you follow. Jesus Christ, they're flying in at the moment. Spook Wicked says, has been carnage reserved? 50 50. <laughs> yeah, 50 50. And, uh, the best description. Oh, the <laughs> uh, Spook767 uh, in the chat <laughs> yeah. just joined, been in the drink replenishment suite. Oh, that's big that's move. his. That's his uh, take on DRS, folks. Uh, drink replenishment suite. Has it. Has it been carnage or reserved? Well, we've had a we've had a bit of carnage on the on the, on the opening laps. Falls are flying in here. Look at the battle here for P P11. Well, it was P12, but Skillion, by the way, has pitted. Fraser, he's ditched the soft tyres, and PTR has gone down the inside of Dan Pennells. Dan Pennells, I think, may have wing damage here. I think I did see an M play off, and Pennells is falling down like an absolute brick to the bottom of the sea. Um, not really enjoying himself. Unless it was the yeah. Dead Sea, then he wouldn't be moving, so he's definitely not in the Dead Sea because he's actually so good. Yeah, he does. He does have right front end plate damage, so that is major, major hampering. But then, ironically, it's bringing the end plateless Dragoon back into the back into the fray. So he is being dragged along. That is interesting. Uh, uh, Scotty, he's uh, he's done pretty well to avoid any. He's done well to avoid all, all the all the, uh, the drama. He started last. He's now. He's now just outside the points. He's uh, just under two seconds behind Rara. Uh, Rara in the Williams. Uh, but unfortunately, oh, we're going to have a battle here. Unfortunately, we're going to have a battle between uh, Reznov, Ben, and Jono for uh, third place. Ben gets past Reznov with that much difficulty. Oh, uh, nudges John nudges him. Jono wanting, oh. wanting a piece of the He's action. Got him as well. Thank you very much. Is he going to get it? Has he, got, has he done it, though? He's and not done a little bit of contact. Almost shot. Oh, look at the speed. That's, they both made it through. <laughs> both made it through just about. He's like, do not even think about coming into my house. <laughs> he shot the door and I'm almost taking his foot in the process. Or front wing in this case. But you get the analogy. <laughs> uh, basically, mate, he uh, and Victor Reznov, ironically, and Jono had previously lost end plates as well. So, real bravery then, to be fair, mate, going around there with half a wing, especially like that. Victor Reznov, not saying, not giving up on the position, but of course he's had to now, which is going to leave him potentially yeah. um, exposed into Vulcan, currently having a very quiet race. Not what Reznov would have wanted, uh, losing two places losing in two one places corner. In, essentially. Literally in one corner, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, there goes Lost Soul in the comments. Damage on Reznov. Oh, who was that new follower as well? Always give the shout outs. We've got Wicked Prophet with two P with two T's. That yeah. extra T is for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Antstan <laughs> back in the pits again. Not enjoying himself at all. Mm. Comes back in now. Yeah. Set of the medium tyres. He's gone for the medium. Soft tyres, but he did say soft in the colour, yeah. but this game. <laughs> well, Wicked's Bishop. Bishop coming down the straight. And he's trying to get through at the end. Sector 2 coming out of the hairpin. PTR. This is a brilliant battle here down here for P12. No points off, but it shows the competitivity of these guys. Just simply wanted to get bragging rights over each other. It's been a pretty clean race. Vulcan's got Victor Reznov, who pits him, by the way. Victor Reznov not doing the Dragoon and managing and keeping himself out on track. Victor Reznov says, sack this yeah. off. I'm coming into the pits. This yeah. is my strategy. He's going to be coming out right behind this group as well, so he's not going to get any joy here. Yeah. Uh, a base, uh, try as he might, he can't close the gap on uh, Bob Refugee uh, the lead. Uh, he almost got within the DRS range at one point, but uh, try as he might, he can't close the gap. No, he's been literally floating around the 1, one to 1 1.2 second mark. He did get into how about he was about eight temps down. In the Grand Prix, look at this battle here for P11 now. So close to the point. Scotty, by the way, he did make a very, very bold prediction last to first. It's going to take a hell of an effort from here. But well, he's in, the right the he's in the points right now. He's in the points right now. He's got a three second penalty for that. He'll need to give the place back. He'll need to give the place back. 
I don't think it was an advantage gain, though. I think he was in front going into the corner. Um, however, it was kind of just a ride over the kerb. Chris, in this sense, does get to P11. Danny P, P13. Just watching on board here. Dan still with wing damage. So many cars this race been negatively affected by the walls. Victor Esnov on the hards. Now, that could be a potential going to the end scenario. That is a that is a very strong possibility, yeah. Because a few a few of these drivers they yet to make a stop as well. Um so everyone from first down to fourteenth yet to make a stop. Um a base uh, try to have try to have a crack at uh, Bob but uh, yeah, he's nothing coming of it. Right back in a base. He's he's put he's he's managed to pull about half a second just from that just from that one DRS zone alone. But Bob's starting to pull that gap back out. Fraser keeping an eye on the top gap. We're just going to go back quickly to the battle for P11. Mate, this is absolutely mental back here. We've currently got five cars once again, all within a second of one another. Kind of awesome stuff here. Literally, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Bishop just managing to pull away. It's going to become a DRS train. Bishop's going to have exceptional pressure on himself. King Chris looking to try and break through, trying to get himself into the points. Oh, yellow flags in sector two. Now, yellow flags flag. in sector two. Uh, that, I think that was just for somebody going uh, wide on the track. I don't know who that actually was. Um, uh, Bishop gets a three second time penalty meanwhile. There's a lot of wing off. There's a lot of wing off down at the, at the back end of the circuit. Um, just by where the, top, the front runners are going. Yeah, they're so on board with the base. I, say, I, I just saw that bit of the front wing that uh, uh, Bob and uh, a base just went through there. Obviously, if we were sitting on simulation damage, that is a potential for a puncture driving anywhere near that. I think potentially it may be Jackie Carl. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call that right now. But I mean, he's going, he's being cut up by Pete. Of course, Pete is on the mediums. Jackie Carl is on the hards. Probably, you'd say at this time, going to the end of the Grand Prix, the top two have literally jumped ship and scarp and away from Ben Prime. He's just simply sitting in third place. Of course, Ben, with that massive lead in the championship, knowing he's ahead of Tomster, only dropping three points to a base as it stands. Ben is literally just comfortably motoring on with his race. And John with a three-second time penalty. That's from P4. That could have a big outlasting effect at the end of the race. Vulcan doing a magnificent job in P5. Openly, Vulcan, a.k.a. Steve, on the page. Really, really struggling with this Grand Prix. And he's not looking forward to this race at all. Currently sitting in with P5. So and here comes a base then. A base within four tenths of a second here, Fraser. Is he going to be able to get himself back into the slipstream? He is. I think he's a little bit too far back. He's a little he's bit too far away. Pop. He's not going to be able to make the move stick on this occasion. These two guys have had various com comings together across the course of the season. I believe they had one in Monza last week. Um, oh, and Dragoon has been overtaken by Skilly in there. That was a DRS overtake with Viktor Esnov just behind. This is really, really beginning to open up this Grand Prix now. We've now got ourselves just under a third, well, about a quarter distance. Another new follow tonight here. Um, Maester, Maester Wild, thank you so much for the follow. Um, and as Unique Shots points out in the chat, Prophet had three Ts. That goes to show that number one, I can't read. Number two, I can't speak. And number three, I can't spell. So that's the three issues. And Scotty has been overtaken by Bishop. I think Scotty has had major problems here. Scotty was... About two seconds off Rara here, Fraser. He's fallen right back into this battle here and he's given up P10. Scotty is in desperate trouble as it stands. Scotty that is not what he would have wanted in his last That is not what he would have wanted in his last first challenge. Uh, a base still keeping within DRS range of uh, uh, Bob as we head towards lap 10. Almost a third of the way through the race already. And that, of course, has been lapped. Of course, the new system. Uh, for lapped cars is even if you ghost you must stay behind it's obviously you know keep it in conjunction with the rules we would turn ghosting off but kind of left it on due to kind of uh, carnage with turning it off say if someone has a say an AI car lags or something or if a disconnected car doesn't ghost it kind of causes more issues and the AI have their own mind <laughs> in yeah. terms of that PTR into 18th and standard currently he is still driving in this race even though it is ghosting he is within one second behind uh, this is fatality if you're watching this is what happens mate when a car is within a second, a lapped car is within a second. This is when the ghosting system comes about. So, Tom, if you are watching, just to kind of give you the heads up, that is obviously what happened to Dragoon's car last night. 
Uh, well, to be fair, mate, uh, Shrews, I don't think Anselm's going to be doing that. Jono pits in from P4, allowing Vulcan to spread his wings. Good choice of words there, considering Vulcans are a bird for anybody who's kind of uncultured in that sense. Uh, <laughs> Scotty is into P, still P10. Scotty with his wing damage now has a train going back to Jono pretty much here. So go back to Andrew Byrne. Scotty has is now leading an eight-car train. Bishop has escaped for the moment. And look at Skillian. Skillian has overtaken King Chris. And Skillian has done two people, Fraser. Up the DRS straight. Absolutely fantastic driving. Overtakes his teammate, overtakes Scotty. Off you go, son. Oh, Victor Reznov behind. Victor Reznov has spawned. Victor Reznov oh, made a goodness, silly move. Man. And he's taken Jono out. Oh. Victor Reznov made an audacious move. And Jono has been taken out as well. Victor Reznov, that is not what you want, that mate. Is this a, is not. That is all how we do things in RF1, buddy. That is a lot of damage on the front oh wing, especially on the right-hand side of the front wing. That is a lot of damage. Not what Reznor would have wanted on his debut. And it's always just gone straight to the wall, and he's out of the race! Did he drive deliberately straight into the wall? It that looks, looks like, like he did, he didn't did. it? It looks like he did. Right, okay. uh, a, a beast, first of the front runners into the pits. A beast is a the first of the front runners. Potentially. Uh, he's, he's gone onto You'd the hard. You'd imagine so, wouldn't you? He's gone onto the hard. Looks oh, like the he's on the end of the race. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Dom, for asking. It's literally a choice of preference. Just seeing the chat there. Uh, yeah, we got a thing about rage quitter, mate. It's kind of what's the word for it? Um, well, fucking frowned upon. <laughs> Scotty comes into the pits then, and Jono stays out. Jono actually didn't have any damage um, on that sense. Um, so here we go. Now, Wicked, if you like us, mate, um, just literally for the entertainment, Dragoon comes in as well. So Scotty and Dragoon shed their wheels, shed their old stuff. They are good back out. Bob currently has a 6.8 second lead. But interestingly to see here, Fraser, a base has come out in totally clear air. He now has literally 10 seconds of track to play with. So this is absolutely perfect. Victor Reznov, that will be a rage quit, and that is not the way you start an RF1 career, matey. Um, not impressed. Uh, we will move on to that. We will deal with that afterwards. Uh, a base has literally put in literally almost a second, one whole second on Topster. This, literally, this stat, um, it's, well, this stat, this lap, stat, maybe the seconds are a stat, I don't know. Um, so discreetly, and they have caught Muirhead. Muirhead, the racing points now, almost in tandem, well, are in tandem because they're together, have both caught up with Muirhead. Muirhead may very well be struggling on them tyres. Bob's Remember in the, the Fraser. Bob, Bob is hits. Bob has pits. answered the base. He's answered the call. And that He's means Ben the is Muirhead in does come the lead. Ben and leads. Oh my word, ben usually they won't even... What's happened? Okay, that, that, was, that was bizarre for some reason, because uh, it looks like on, on my... <laughs> On my screen, it looks like the crew were just like, they had just come out, and uh, then Bob just went, Oh, look at this! Just Fraser! Like look at the base! A base on the outside! Oh my goodness, mate! The undercut! It didn't quite work, but the, here we go, Bob's tyres are going to be cold. This it could be the biggest moment in this Grand Prix here. A base this nearly could made it stick. This the turning point that he needs! This, this is, could be the turning point that a base needs! RF1 Division 2 Season 2. Singapore just woke up here. A base just get back in line. He has got back in line. A base is doing. He did wonders on that outlap, but Bob just about, and I mean by the skin of a car width, managed to. Well, that's quite a big skin, but by a car width, basically, managed, <laughs> managed to keep the position. Of course, he, a base had to go around the outside, which meant it would have needed a heck of a run. Couldn't quite get the momentum. Bob, of course, is on the inside, coming out of the pits, and manages to maintain P1. Well, P4, of course, but P1 at the moment. Now, remember, though, Fraser, the two no, the two racing points, we call them no point racing, why not? Let's just <laughs> keep the tradition going. Um, the two racing points are currently second and third on the hard tyre. I think those two later in the Grand Prix, along with Rara and Bishop, they will. They think they'll have a lot to say moving forward later on into the Grand Prix. Um, Dan Pennell's currently running in 14th, not having the best of races. Jackie Cole, likewise. Jackie, one of the top top runners and top gunners in RF1 Division 2, one of the top five in the league discreetly. And Ben Prime Pitts. Ben Prime Pitts, he has, he's on, I believe he's on his pretty much 12 to 19 strategy. He's going to be on the freshest tyres of the medium starters at the end of the Grand Prix. I think he's the last one, he is the last one to change off mediums after starting on them. Skillian has had a hell of a drive back up through the field. Ben comes out, literally just 
behind a base. I think he's going to be in clear air still because Rara is only just coming around the corner. Rather than fact, I think Rara, Rara may very well jump Ben Prime here. Rara, I think, is going to be a thorn in Ben Prime's side if Rara can get the move done. Rara has managed to overtake Ben Prime. He has. Crazy. So Ben Prime has something. Rara hasn't pitted yet, of course. But Rara now has something to do. Bishop with a three-second warning with Skillian coming behind him. Skillian working a two-stop. And you get the three-second warning as well. Andy B not having a very kind race here. King Chris currently in P10. Just hang on to points. Chris does need to pit again, though. Not been the best Grand Prix for King Chris, starting so low down. And Ben Prime has gone around the outside of Rara, saying, thank you very much. I'll rob your lunch money. There we go. I am through, says Ben Prime, up in the P4. Cracking, cracking start to this Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, Max was stopping 30. Uh, rage quitting is not... What we do in our RF1 matey is incredibly frowned upon. Uh, we don't we don't deal in rage quitting. And by the way, uh, Skillian has got wing damage. Oh no, he's got wing damage. Fraser Skillian. Oh yeah, yellow wing flag damage. in three. Yellow flag in sector, sector three. three. I think that well. is for Skillian. It's not. It's Antstan. Antstan having major problems. Antstan currently spinning off, mate. But Skillian had wing damage. He's been overtaken by pretty much half the field here. And Muirhead and King Chris Muirhead on the fresher hard tyres managing to make light work of King Chris. Andrew Byrne just hanging on in the background. Jono and Skillian. So Jono is still on his recovery drive. Jono actually was in a net fourth position, remember? Currently sitting actually now because of his wing damage in a net sixth position. Obviously, he had the coming together with uh, Victor Reznov, who is currently the only DNF. Quite impressive, the only guy. To retire from this Grand Prix, really impressive driving from the guys. Um, so I believe we've got Dragoon. So the no point racings of Tomster and discreetly, discreetly leading Tomster. 1.2 seconds here on lap 14 of 31. Fraser, really, really intriguing race so far. So much more to get through, obviously, as we move forward. Um, Vulcan is all over Bishop. I think Vulcan has actually gone for a move on Bishop there. That's probably not the ideal place to get the move done. If he went for a switchback, the only thing he switched off, switched back or off was his light bulb, um, especially with that sort of manoeuvre. Um, so Skillian looking set for a really decent points haul. Then Fraser, he didn't, he had made a mistake into the wall, and that is pretty much curtains in terms of points, barring safety car, barring other incidents. We've seen it all so far this race and over this course of the Singapore week in our RF1. And of course, this is brought to you live in conjunction with RF1, based on Positive Glass Channel. Brought to you in partnership with CSR and Formula One News and Memes, the place where you can grab all of your favourite news and memes. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm not used on. This is why I'm not used on commercials, as well as the fact I have a face that could. Uh, I, have a, I have a face that only a mother can slap. You know what I mean? So it's one of them. Um, but yes, oh, oh Vulcan's gone Vulcan. Vulcan. Vulcan has gone off, Vulcan. Vulcan from P8, Vulcan from P8, oh. in the wall, another one, mate, I, do you know if I was in P8 right now, I would just be a matador and let him through, let's face it, everyone, Jono's hit the wall, Jono's lost end plate damage right in front of Vulcan there, and Jono's out of the race, he's out of the race, huge crash, huge crash by Jono, Jono oh. is gone, that nice. is now under normal F1 rules, that's gotta be safety car. That, that's, the same place. Straight out. that's the same place Bishop crashed in qualifying earlier this evening. It was, and that was an absolutely manic crash. I mean, half of Jono's car is currently floating around the Marina Bay Lake on the outside of it, or the Bay of Marina. Um, that's a Jono, the second retirement. Goodness me, not ideal, which of course promotes Vulcan back up into P11 with wing damage, of course. Andrew Byrne chasing down King Christopher out of the ninth position. And look at the guys at the top, Tomster and discreetly both running their own casual race unique shots yeah, it's, Let's have a look yeah here. still keep it within drs range it is, a, it is a great battle i will give them that uh, uh the, the racing points uh, or no point racing uh, as you have uh, as you've said uh, <laughs> uh, battling for that lead but of course bearing in mind they haven't stopped yet but they've managed to keep themselves out of trouble and as a result they are now one and two in the race at the moment as we approach the halfway point. They certainly are, mate. But one thing that I will point out as well, remember Bob and Base are still locked in a battle for first. 2.4 seconds Bob has managed to pull that gap out to. Ironically, pretty much the same gap that Bob is behind the no-point racings as well. 
which now this could be very intriguing because of course you know they are on the they are going to be on much worn tyres but they're not obliged in any way shape or form to let the guys who've pitted through they could really prove to be a real thorn in Bob's side he's going to have to overtake them you'd imagine the way he's catching them on the track um, it was seven seconds around about six laps ago and all of a sudden it's now down to 2.6 or 2.4 as it now is. This, of course, could work into a base advantage to pull him right back onto Bob. Later on, Ben and Rara, and we've got Bishop Muirhead beginning to absolutely haul in Bishop now. he You'd imagine he'll get the move done soon. Vulcan. Andrew Byrne is in pitting. The pit. Why is he pitting? There's no wing off. He's going for... Oh, of course, he had the five seconds speeding in the pit lane as well. Andrew Byrne having a race to forget, seemingly. He goes up to the he it should be able to get to the end of the race on those. Should be able to get oh, to the race. It's going to be a stretch, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> AJ is to us in the chat. Um, no rain, no safety car. Um, and Scotty's retired. Scotty's out. What's Scotty? happened to him? Uh, I have no What's idea. To him? Oh, he's. I think has Scotty gone straight on. He went straight on at the final corner. That's, a... that's what it is. He did. That's both um... tall Russell's out of the race, and that means. Advantage Alfa Romeo in the It certainly is, mate. Alfa Romeo, exactly. Good point there from that there, Fraser. Well done keeping that one in mind. I don't know if that's a deliberate race quit from Scotty. We'll keep hold of that. Obviously, the way we deal with race quits, mate, is this is how harsh it is. <laughs> um, quali ban and stop on lap one. We kind of hope it wasn't a rage quit for his sake more than anything. Um, it's, no, Scotty, there's no safety car. I don't know why you're trying to cause one. If you deliberately tried to cause one, mate, that's a deliberate rage quit. We'll hand that over to the stewards let him work the magic with you. Um, but anyway, Ben Prime. And look at this, mate. We've got a three-car battle. It's a three-car battle. Both racing points. And, and, the... Bob is, and Bob's now into the mix. This is going to make things interesting. <laughs> They're all three of them are there. Now, obviously, if it's working on team orders, I know these two have had a few collisions in the past. And... Obviously, Thompson discreetly I'm referring to there, but Bob getting himself in the mix as well. Bob will have... Fraser is what we were saying. At least one of them racing points will have to pit in the next lap or two. You'd imagine both of them within the next three laps to make the soft to medium... Um, da, 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 the medium... Sorry, what was I saying? The hard to medium. Sorry, let me get my bleeding. Mate, do you know what? I might start working with a fucking thesaurus next to me because half the time I can't even understand what I'm saying myself. And I'm the one <laughs> uttering these poxy words, to be fair. But... <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, I told you, mate, expect the unexpected on my streams. But what I was saying is both no-point no races still have to pit. What order they're going to pit in will be the curious part. And Bob now literally needs He's to get past right the pair He's right on the back of Tom. He's right on the back of Tom. I wouldn't be surprised I've if... I've got Prophet saying... I wouldn't be surprised if Bob managed to get past... Uh, He'll need to get past at Bob least one of them. The next lap or so. I wouldn't be surprised. Got a little bit of coal while we're streaming. Keep the wet whistle wet. And that, I believe, is the yellow flag. Sector 2 and 3. It's Antstam. Antstam's oh. come off. He's having a nightmare race. Antstam doing the valiant thing. Not backed out of the lobby like, like a couple of people already have. Keeping it going. The bother refugees all over Thompson here. And Dubs oh, pits. And so Thompson that, pits. pits. Yeah, we called one that of them. We called the one of them. That means he discreetly keeps the lead. But it's Bob. Now back into second place. A base... One and a half seconds. He's put down a second on him. He's put a second on him. He put a second on him. Bob, of course, had to go slow behind the tor behind the no point racings, and he's had to go sort of bases turn the wick up, turn this up here, and he had well, he had to turn the wick up. Uh, discreetly, currently running with low fuel, by the way. Low fuel, so discreetly is going to have to do some fuel saving before the end of this Grand Prix. Thompson's has fallen down to ninth. He'll be tenth, I believe. Yeah, he is tenth. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be tenth. Yeah. Coming out in 10th position. So Bob. Bob has already put another four tenths on a base. Yeah, he's half a second behind discreetly. Hopefully he'll be able to get past without much difficulty. Right, let's have a look at Andrew Bid, fastest slap of the race into P13 due to PTR's pit stop. Jackie Cole and Dampenels. Dampenels hasn't actually pitted. And who is that there? I saw a car on the wall. And Stan is having about as... Well, well, uh, well, pff, as much luck as Derby County about 12 years ago. Um, not really ideal in that sense. And Anstan is stuck. Complete. Oh, he's just having a mare. That was that was deja vu. That to be fair. Um, Dragoon's still going <laughs> in P15. Now, discreetly. 
is just holding Bob up there. A base is hauling him in, Fraser. A base is hauling him, but then he's going to get... A base is with the DRF. Three second penalty. Bob gets the slip. Bob penalty. That Bob could penalty. be a game changer. That, that could be, be the game race, changer for the race. race changer. Race it. That could be a race manipulator, that right there. A base is flying. He's now... Go no, Bob now needs to get, get, put the, get the pedal to the metal down here. What an amazing start. Unbelievable stuff here. Discreetly, P4. Will he be able to get top set? Look at this. Right behind him there, you've got Vulcan, Muirhead, and Bishop. Bishop currently leading that group. Bishop hasn't pitted either, by the way. So Bishop doing a remarkable job on them, on them hards. 18 laps just to still be able to keep them behind. Four cars there. So Rara's just in front of him as well. Oh, and oh, that Muirhead is... Got well, that's... To be honest with you, that was an unbelievable move, and it was a dive, and he's given the position back, but because he's given the position back, and Vulcan just spun off in front of him, Vulcan's exploded, coming out of town. He's lost his front way! Thompson moves into a... He's lost his front way! <laughs> well, Mirhead made a dive on Bishop, but that was an interesting one. Mirhead dived Bishop, he gave two places back, Vulcan got past Mirhead, and then decided to do a sympathy spin and spin in front of him. Well, that was intriguing, guys. Um, <laughs> on to the next chapter of madness. Vulcan on the hard tyres. He's going to have to pit in. You imagine to come and set a set of mediums. He PTR is off as well. PTR has gone off. It's all happening all in one go. King Chris. Sector three. Sector three. I think that might have been. I think that might have yeah, been that? the. Uh, um, I think it might have been the. Uh, oh, it's I think here. It might have been the final corner again. Same corner. No, it's the, on, under the bridge. Under the bridge, oh, see, cars disappeared now. Under the I was, bridge. I was, I was the same place, uh, John, I believe it was, that went off. Evening, Gritmaster. Welcome to the chat, matey. Um, you, we are having yet another calam... Well, it's not calamitous. It's actually been absolutely thrilling, this race, to be fair, so far. This, honest to God, phrase, this is what they're all like. Um, this, this is why I actually have a... Uh, a, a, a kind of static heart monitor sitting next to me. Um, not because I'm actually 414 years old. Just in case they give me a fucking heart attack with some of the moves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Rara and Jackie Cole. Andy B has overtaken Jackie Cole. Jackie is on 17 lap old hards. You think he probably could have made that a little bit more difficult. Yeah, he's, yeah I, think, I, think, I think Jackie's going to need to come in at some point to change those tyres. But uh, Rara up in fifth, meanwhile. He's uh, a nice oh, lap on those hards. Muir head. Yeah, That's a better move. <laughs> this time he got it done, and look at Tomster here, almost, almost oh, pushing all, Bishop all, along the track. Oh, he had a crack at it as well. <laughs> oh, here he go before DRS. What a move! He, and he, he's going to have the them. DRS anyway. There it is, wide open. He does and there it. He's seven Tomster. Muirhead does actually, does not have DRS actually saying that. Muirhead, no DRS. So Tomster is now going to be the man on the move. Look how much Tomster has lost behind discreetly potential wing change there perhaps potential you know five second penalty that we might have missed but uh, tom's have fallen a good six and a half seven seconds but not well, eight seconds now let's have a little look yes he's eight seconds behind discreetly so gives discreetly a bit of an easier ride along the way remember of course we don't obviously know the state of the penalties it's something i never look at um we, we just let it all play out it yeah, means that we can literally yeah, we won't find out the state of those penalties until the end of the race. Tomster having a crack at Muirhead. He's gone round the outside the there. The wall. He's gone round the outside. But Unbelievable move by Tomster. I've never seen that done. He's pulled it off round there. For the love of Christ. Awesome driving by Tomster. And now he's got and now he's got Rara. Oh, he's not going to go for Rara there. Oh my God! Oh, yes. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, oh yes, man. Top Stella this is, is an advocate of driving. Unbelievable this racing. This is why I love Formula One because of moments like that. That is absolutely ridiculous. A mere head now on the back of Rara. Rara and Bishop are still going. Oh, Bishop's pitting. What an beat that is. That is. That is Top Stella obviously. Is, mm, <laughs> this is. Top to show what you can do. This is Fernando Alonso level oh, mere head. Of bravery from mere Japan head. 2005. Mir head round Rara, Mir head on the outside of Rara, and Mir head on the through. outside of Rara going on the fucking. <laughs> it's all going mental. Mir head through. Uh, Bishop, Mir head is up in a P6, and stand there's a Mir yellow flag not, somewhere. Mir head electing not to use the DRS. That's interesting. Well, well, you don't. You know, really got past. But I would have thought he would have at least tried to use the DRS to at least increase the gap. 
<laughs> Mate, the chat has um, the chat has got been lit up. Tom Stair lighting up the chat there. Absolutely awesome. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, I think the guy in the pits was Skillian, mate. He's had another pit stop. The debutante's not having a joyous not weekend of it here so far. But to be fair, Skillian is still going. Anything can happen, as we've seen already. Five cars, well, four cars limited from this race. PTR, Scotty, Jono, and Viktor Reznov. Not the ideal start to his RF1 career, especially not with a race quit now. If we were to end this Grand Prix right now, Fraser... A bet, uh, Bob would win this race by one tenth of a second. Yeah, that is the fine margin we're working with. Yeah, because he's managed to pull out that three-second gap that he needs because of that corner cut, uh, because of the uh, time penalty he received earlier on. Incredible, incredible racing so far, and we've still got just under just under ten laps to go of this track, and we've got a yellow flag in sector two. And Stan is really, really not enjoying that corner. Um, <laughs> That's the fourth time I've seen him go off. Well, Topster obviously gets the fastest lap driving like that. Jesus Christ, why wouldn't he? Absolutely fantastic driving there. And discreetly, falling a bit further back off. Oh, no, he's not. He's caught him. He's 15 behind Ben, wasn't he? Forgive me. Mathematics once again, guys. Not one of my strong points. Rara finally pits in from P7. I believe he's going to be coming out behind Bishop. That looks like a pretty much certified P11, but that means if Rao is going to be elected to score points here, Fraser, he's going to need to really put the hammer down and begin to catch up with these guys and see if he can make something potential of Jackie Cole to pit again. He's doing a wonderful job on them hard tyres. 20 laps like Rara did. Rara, of course, doing 21. Jackie Cole entering lap number 21 on them tyres. Lap 22 of 31. The race leaders are currently... On the speaking of the race leaders, there is Bob the Refugee. Pretty much a lights to flag moment with a little bit of a scare. Obviously, when he came out of the pits with a base all over the back of him. And to be honest, mate, it's been a pleasure to work with you so far, mate. He's a really, really easy guy to commentate with. That's one thing I will definitely say. Um, but here we go then. Dan Pennell's coming on the back of Drugu. This is for P12. Bragging rights only at the moment, but you never know. Two more retirements, Fraser, and this could be the final points pay and position gap. Or position to obviously have it. I don't know where the word gap came in from. Um, I'm assuming they want to sponsor me too. Um, obviously, you know, uh, the only thing I've got I would have anything to do with gap is the gap between my front teeth. So be, be prepared to drop us a follow there and a sponsor. Um, gap. Yeah. <laughs> Repping teeth. Oh, oh, damn it. I was trying to go on the outside of the Singapore sling. That is not going to get the job done. We saw, I believe it was Muirhead earlier in the race, going down the inside of the Singapore sling. And mm -hmm. Rara also. And it came Chris currently sitting one second behind, so the gaps are beginning to come down now between 8th to 10th. This could be an intriguing battle moving forward. I believe I did see Chris's name come up on the timesheets earlier for a penalty or the stewards report. So we'll see if he does. And King Chris once again go melting into the floor. I believe we need to investigate this after the race because that is increased downforce. <laughs> Using the floor <laughs> to get round. Um, yeah. So battle between P8. Oh, what a race. Uh, lap 23, we've only, got, we've only got a handful of laps to go where it's a, th a three-car scrap for eighth place, uh, Jackie, King Chris and uh, Bishop. Uh, King Chris is right on the back of Jackie. He's got the DRS. He's going to go for the move. Look at Here Chris, he he's going for it. Is he going to make the move stick? He should do all and he does. bags. Jackie's not giving it up. Jackie's not giving up on this. He's Jackie, Chris just makes it but through. Chris having none of it. A beautiful race in there by Jackie. He is getting his shoulders, arms and legs and all sorts out, giving him good, good, the old handbags. Good stuff. Not wanting to lose any positions, of course. Remember, Jackie Cole is seeing his championship chances absolutely wane away with every single car that approaches him. Not what you want. Dan Pennells and Dragoon and the battling second runner of Vulcan. There are battles up and down the field here so far. Battle between 8th, 9th and 10th. And we've got 12th, 13th, 14th with Raro, Rara absolutely in limbo. MP 14. That's how we do. Lost horses getting Chris. So let's roll on here. A bit of banter in the chat between the guys. <laughs> Always a bit of banter. We love a bit of banter. Um, especially when it's aimed at me, um, you know, there is actually a thing called hashtag pause as a wanker phrase, you'll, you'll see that banded around a lot on the page and there. <laughs> um, ironically, I started it pretty much, which I think it was actually Benny who started it, but he didn't race anymore, so I take full credit for it. Um, so <laughs> here comes something else, still battling here. Jackie Cole, by the way, um, what the, oh, Bishop's got past Jackie, Bishop's got past Jackie, Jackie just kind of settling in 
to that P10 roll. Maybe wait until the end of the race to try and rob the fastest lap. Currently held by Skillian, I believe. No, it's not Tomster, of course. Remember with that blistening lap. Sorry, forgive me. I did forget that Tomster yeah. grabbed the fastest lap. We are literally just under eight laps to go. Till the end of the Grand Prix now, approaching, fast approaching lap 25, 4.6 seconds, separating first and second a further, four and a half seconds back to Ben Prime, and then we've got Discreetly and Tomster Muirhead having a another, another very, very solid afternoon of racing or evening in Singapore, and Dan Pennell's has been overtaken by Vulcan there, there goes the crackling Mike, just to add a little bit of spice to the fray. Vulcan is into P13. He's not going to have a crack at Dragoon. Rara is absolutely hauling in Jackie Cole. This is for the final points per position. Even though it's not going to be a championship effector, it really, really will help him. Vulcan and Dragoon. Vulcan has just done Dragoon around the outside. Going at the end, end of the DRS zone. Great move by Vulcan. Oh, it's the Dragoon's in the, in the wall. Oh, dear me. More that throwing it damage. It's problems for Dragoon again. Real issues for Dragoon. Oh, dearie me. Not ideal in the Select Dragoons having an absolute weekend to forget here, or week to forget Singapore. Racing Division 3 didn't have a good race there either. This is not going to come 11th place like he has in nine times this season. He's going to be a bit further down. Second time penalty. Oh, penalty's racking in, and you know when... You know when you've got problems, don't you? It's not ideal here. We're going to go on board with him briefly, and... Oh, and Andrew Byrne when pits again. Why is he pitted? Why is he pitted? Oh, front wing. Front wing off. Oh, he's front going on. wing he's off. Andrew and Byrne. He's, and he's going on to the sorts. He's going on to the sorts. So much. Might... It's a case of, you know what? I've got nothing left to lose. Might as well go for the fastest lap. Might as well go for it. But he is quite a way off the points now. If it wasn't too bad, you could imagine just staying out and allowing yourself potentially the chance to get maybe eighth or eighth. Remember Jackie Cole? He isn't going anywhere too fast. Oh, well, actually, Andrew Byrne's fallen down to 13th place here, so Andy B has really, really ruined himself. If yeah. He's going to have a chance of fastest lap, Fraser. He's got the two Renaults just within a three-second radius of him, just up the road, so it's, he's going to need to clear them if he wants a proper crack at fastest lap. On this lap, he's going to have to do it. Otherwise, fastest lap will be, well, not impossible, but still just not going to be an easy target to yeah. hit. And by the way, Ben Prime again podium position for Ben. Anstang gets very nicely out of the way of his teammate there, even though the car's ghosting still showing incredible racecraft to move out of the way. Yeah. That is a big thumbs up. Go yeah, ahead, Dragoon. yeah, Dragoon's just coming to the pits. He's gone onto the soft tires as well. Uh, he's going to have a crack at the fastest lap as well, by the looks of it. Uh, the gap between Bob and a base is taking time penalty into account is 2.2 uh, seconds. So Bob comfortably with the gap he needs to be able to maintain that race winning position. All about Bob this race, isn't it? It's been all about Bob and the challenge of a base. Managed to defend off a base in this case. Ben Prime having a very, very good stint of it. We're going to do a bit of an early one this time, guys. Uh, in the chat, obviously myself and Fraser will discuss it a bit later on towards the end of the Grand Prix. Um, ben Prime with a three second penalty. That will kind of that pretty much almost eliminates him from the second place battle, doesn't it? Big battle yeah. between Andrew Byrne. We're going to focus here on Andrew Byrne and Dan Pennells. He is obviously going for that fastest lap. Driver of the day, guys, in the chat. Fire away. Obviously, the official results will be revealed in the podium interview. We're going to do a brief podium. Andy B has gone right down the outside of Danny Pennells. Mm -hmm. Manages to hang it with Danny. Goes off the track. He'd probably have to return the position there. That was... He was behind him. Now, see, that was a little bit naughty. I don't believe Andy was in front, to be honest with you. When he got the move done, he did have all four wheels off the track. Naughty boy. I'm keeping up to date with the chat as well. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Fraser driver. <laughs> Ralph. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not even driving. Legend, mate. <laughs> well, well, people... Oh, well, dear. People, well, people often say you only get one shot to make a good first impression, and it looks like uh, the viewers are thoroughly enjoying uh, my presence. Hopefully, I can make some more appearances throughout the season, uh, the remainder of the season. Mate, I'll, I'll, I'll turn around and say, mate, trust me, if you have said that before, and then you get roasted, and then you feel really, really shy, so just watch yourself. <laughs> this, this, is like a, this is like a wrestling crowd, mate, trust me. They will, they will turn on you in the blink of an eye. Uh, oh, here we go, Rara. Yes. Rara and Jackie yeah. Cole. 
Now, there was another thing you mentioned in the chat when I went to have a look at the chat. I've not looked at it for a while. Um, basically, um, I believe it was uh, Wicked Prophet turned around and said, Jackie, Jackie Cole's tyres will be near breaking point. Well, we're going to find out if they can withstand yeah, Jackie breaking tires point be because here horrible. we've got Rara. Rara is all over him here then, Fraser. He's currently rocking P9. Jackie Cole's still having a really, really solid drive. Jackie managing to obviously pull damage on the station. 25 laps on those hard tyres. He's committed now. He's absolutely committed. He's aiming at that point from the start that he had. Remember, he he was he spun round off the start. He was in P4. Rara, oh, it's going to be him here. You'd imagine, Jackie. You would imagine not really going to fight it. No, Jackie, realizing nah. at the plight that he's in. Yeah, but he's but he's got 15 seconds between him and uh, Vulcan. So unless he has a unless he ends up in the wall or something. Uh, it's unlikely he'll end up losing that uh, last point paying position. Do you know what, mate? I don't often get involved in chat banter, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go in I'm gonna go in head first this time. Scotty, uh, two unique shots, has um, said one more award than unique will get all season. Well, I'm actually gonna turn it around and say, well, actually, Scotty, unique shots is going to win Division Three. If he does, he's gonna win Division Three, and if he wins it, he's actually gonna have the bollocks and the testosterone to be allowed to be promoted to the other league rather than jump back into the same one with your tail between your legs. You should be in Division One. Pipe down, bitch. We move back to the action. <laughs> the guys in the chat will love that one. Um, <laughs> oh, and Anstan in the uh, oh. pits again. Anstan, he's just trying to get to the end. Kudos to Anstan. He has had the yeah. proverbial and literal race from hell. Now, intriguing battle this Fraser. We've got Bishop, who has two lap fresher tyres in King Chris. Bish just yep. rode across the kerb there. Yeah, um, and he just received a time penalty as a result. Got a time penalty. I was about to say, but he is all over Chris. Now, the two of them, I believe, have had one penalty each already. I'm not, we don't have to check. But I don't know. A really intriguing battle between these two. Of course, Singapore being the longest Grand Prix in terms of physical time to complete the race. Uh, barring a wet, I think the only one that gets near it is a wet Belgium, I think. That's kind of the only one that kind of comes anywhere near it. Yeah. Oh, what, Singapore, that'll probably be a bit longer as well. Uh, <laughs> so, Bob the Refugee yeah. currently leading by 4.5 seconds. Gap's not moved. In fact, the gap has moved. Because remember you said, Fraser, there was 2.2 seconds after the three-second penalty. A base beginning to He's beginning to close the gap. He is. That's seven tenths in three laps, that is, on my calculation. He's, he's down to 1.4 with the time penalty taken into account. <laughs> I, love it. I love it when people compare their awards in the chat. It's really good. <laughs> well, to yeah. be fair to you, you guys are debating it. I've had more wanker of the week awards. So, um, quite frankly, I believe I've put all of you in your place. <laughs> that is the, the, most, the, the most consecutive wanker of the week awards. And to be fair, man, this is how good this game, I think, has got. Obviously, we criticise the game an awful lot, you know, for its connectivity. Mm -hmm. Etc. Etc. We're racing here with somebody from the southern, from the southern hemisphere. King Chris is in in Australia from New Zealand, and it's you know obviously it's going to lower the connectivity rate in the lobby. It's natural, but you find even though his car does jink from side to side, if you're watching him live as it's doing here on stream, uh, you find when you're actually racing with him, it doesn't really have the same effect. Like back in older games, like especially the first couple of games that came out like 2015 and 16 you couldn't race with the Australians and the Southern Hemisphere guys it still does lag like we did have South Africans in the league that unfortunately we had to part away from because well quite frankly they they, they weren't very nice people um, but <laughs> should just move on from there uh, but yeah no they basically the connectivity of this game with Chris has been absolutely brilliant and to be fair he's managed to put in another solid drive remember King Chris did only just scraped Scraped Fraser into Q2 and qualified in 15th place. So mm -hmm. he's done an absolutely, absolutely magical job. And remember, r this. Wait a minute. There's a positions gained. There are one, two, three, three people who started outside of Q2 in the points. Was it two? No, sorry, discreetly was in the division. No, sorry, it was th sorry, two people. Bishop and Rara, remember, and King Chris. Oh, well, amazing position gains today. Dan yeah, Pinnell's absolutely. Is, I, I, love, I, I love how I made a stat and just basically got... I, I shot myself down realising that, you know, hashtag mathematics. Um, even though I'm really good at maths, just not very good at common sense. Um, Bishop then is all over King Chris, the closest battle on track in the battle for P7. Of course, Bob now has just entered lap number 30. He is running through. He's in sector two. 
and Stan claiming fastest lap. He's got to do something better in this Grand Prix. Dragoon then to get out of the way of Muirhead, I believe. Um, Dan Penelso. Was a yellow flag in Sector 1 then? We're going to keep our eyes peeled on that. Get back on board with the battle for P7. No, Fraser, I hope you've enjoyed it, matey. Um, like I said, we've worked pretty well together in fairness, mate. I like it. I like the fact that you kind of hold the conversation, you keep it going. And in honesty, mate, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Really, really thoroughly enjoyed it, matey. Yeah, it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to uh, commentate on this uh, race. It's, it's been action packed all the way through the uh, through the evening, the qualifying and the race. Uh, and you mentioned about um, uh, one of the drivers that you've known since your days in F1 2013. Uh, that game for me has one of the best um, intros, in my opinion, as far as um, sports games are concerned. Because I mean, sports games. You've got to have a great opening intro to be able to get the get the players engaged in the in the game. And um, another example of that is with F1 2017, "Born to Be Wild." That song sums up F1 yeah. down to a T. That took us by surprise, man. That took us by surprise. That did. That was an unexpected game intro, wasn't it? I mean, I didn't think they were gonna. Well, it wasn't unexpected because they put it on all the promos, didn't they? But you know what I mean. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> But um, but, but now, no, but, now but now that we've but now that we've actually got an official F1 theme composed by Brian Tyler, he did a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, I mean, I had my criticisms regarding the F1 theme when I first listened to it, but um, after after hearing it in like the pre-race build-up, it, it sounds amazing. Oh, mate, the pre yeah, when it's on the pre-race build up, it does get gets the emotions pumping, man. I do love that. That's one, that's yeah. one thing I love about it. Um, and by the way, matey, your first commentary with myself is nearly at a close because we are on lap 31 of 31 now. I love what yeah. I'm saying. It's come to a close. This is when all the action started last race when everyone started exploding last night. Bob, the refugee, has put in a remarkable performance. I don't often give number uh, guys on pole. But I'm actually, for once in my life, giving him driver of the day myself. Um, he's putting a command in display, done what he's needed to do, managed to fend off the bases, really hard push, and fend off the racing points, obviously catching them up, showing incredible patience, still managed to keep a gap. And this is Bob the Refugee that. coming around. And, and he wins, wins the Singapore Grand Prix. Division we'll 2, Bob the Refugee. The... We'll see what happens for the time oh, penalty. Base had, oh, base had six. A base had a lot six of more. time penalties. Ben Prime, Ben Prime had some as well. Ben Prime he, is in the key position. We are line third. Stern. But I think line for me, Stern there. I think for me, my driver of the day. Uh, I mean, I could give it to Bob for his consistent performance throughout Tomster. the entire. Oh, look at that! So it got across here. Tomster has done discreetly by one hundredth of a second on penalty countback. Give <laughs> me for the interruption. Holy moly moment! Ben just wow, shows go on, you how. <laughs> that just shows you how game-changing those time penalties can be. Unbelievable. Um, and here comes Muirhead. Going across the line. Good drive by Muirhead. Another solid eight points for Team Haas. I'm not biased one bit. Sorry, you were going to say them. Sorry, forgive me, Fraser. I think as far as, my, as far as my driver of the day is concerned, I would probably give it to either Bishop or Discreetly. Um, especially Bishop, because despite his first... Despite the first part of qualifying, despite a crash in that first part of qualifying, still managing to get into the points. Fantastic recovery drive from him. Great stuff for him. Jackie Cole, he made it work. Or does he make it work? He does make it work. Jackie Cole has done 30, 30 laps on the hards. He has done every lap barring one and manages to make a, get a point. He was running in P19, Jackie Cole, earlier in this Grand Prix. Cracking stuff, and that is round 15, Division 2, Singapore. Pretty much wrapped up. I'll bring the guys in from the podiums. What an exceptional thing. I'm going to fly through these podiums, matey, because to be fair, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest because I'm fucking knackered. <laughs> yeah. Looking there's a, uh, he's going to blast there's a, ja there's a Jackie in the chat. He is very happy with, um, with his 10th uh, place, and it's easy to see why. You would be, mate. Oh, to be honest with that, I, I, actually, to be fair, I'd probably be happy with actually finishing that Grand Prix with no punctures, to be fair. I just see the podium celebrations. Alfa Romeo. Familiar sight across the three divisions, picking up another race victory there. Good stuff, but then the ominous figure of Ben Prime. 
once again getting a podium. A base back up to form as well. No, a base has had a few tricky races, a couple of incidents, a couple of guys hitting him off. I don't think the guy in first position did collide with him. <laughs> Rob Monza, very close scrape today, but it is Bob the Refugee claiming another victory. I believe that is race victory at number three of the season for Bob. Right, so we and will get on to the classified results then. Yep, so yeah, right, Bob Refugee. I'll let you do this one. <laughs> with pleasure. So yeah, as we say, as um, as positively said, uh, Bob Refugee, third win of the season. Fantastic performance from him. Very consistent all weekend. A base managing to take a slight chip out of uh, Ben's uh, championship lead, but it doesn't stop Ben from pulling out another uh, consistent performance from him. Then it's Tom Stern discreetly great performance from the racing points. Then it's Muirhead in sixth, King Chris in seventh for the McLaren, Bishop, my driver of the day, great recovery drive. Then it's Rara and Jackie rounding up the points. And then down the rest of the field, you've got Vulcan, Andrew, Dan, Skillion, Dragoon, and Stan. And then the non-finishers, PTR, Scotty, Jono, and Reznov. And of course, that was the results there. I believe we've got... Um... Andy, I think it's Bob's in the party, isn't he? I need to go and bring the rest in. Uh, forgive me, I'm not sure if they are here for the podiums. Uh, we'll be with you in a minute. Well, obviously, I know, I'm not sure if Ben's included his audio. We'll get all the guys to include their audios before we ask the monotonous questions that we ask every week. How would you like the race? You know, did, did you enjoy your preparation? Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> So here we go then, we will wait for the guys to come in, we've now got our second guy in, we'll begin to interview Bob in a minute, and we've got a base coming in too. Uh, Bob, if you can please include your audio guys, a big congratulations to the top three. Uh, we're going to fly through this segment yes. because, number, well, actually no, I'll be honest, not because I can't be arsed, but because I need a fucking cigarette. Um, as I've managed to go through the whole of the... I just went for one. <laughs> one. Lou, do you know what? The first of the one, I've actually gone through a race. <sighs> you guys have not drawn me, driven me to alcohol this week. It's been a fucking classic. By the yeah, way, a good race. Well done, Bob the Refugee. 25 points, matey. Talk us through your race. Cheers. Um, like, I came into this weekend expecting to win, but I, I was starting to doubt that in the first 10 laps. A base was just right behind me. And I could only get, at most at one time, about a one, one and a half second gap. Um, but um, after the pit stops, it was so close. I'm, I'm not sure. I just know once we came round, uh, I think it was turn three or four, He was there was absolutely no gap between us. And I knew I just had to put my head down and floor it and try to get away from him. But once I, once I actually checked the penalties and saw he had, I think it was nine seconds of penalties, I sort of was able to just relax and take my time and not put the car on the wall. And to be fair, especially with Singapore, I mean, we did mention it last night myself. Uh, would obviously, you know, in that commentary, um, it was literally a case of, you know, sometimes with Matt, of course, because, do you know what, I'll be honest with you, I almost forgot who I commentated with last night. <laughs> <laughs> memory of a fish. It's like a, I was, it's only Matt, isn't it? Anyway, that, that's clickbait, by the way. Uh, but no, um, it literally is a case. You know, like for example, we were talking about when Senna and Monaco in '88 said, you know, when you're driving around Monaco, you literally get into that sort of racing tunnel, don't you? Where you know it almost becomes imperative that you literally just don't try not to make a mistake. But in fairness, um, this is where we're up to, Bob. A magical drive. You are my driver of the day, below, matey. Um, I don't often go just for Thanks the so much. guys who win, but guys who win. Um, but it was just the way you kind of commanded it, and an incredible little mini battle between yourself and a base. Were you worried that he'd get you coming out of the pits? I was when I saw him. When I was waiting to come out, waiting to come out of the pit lane, and I could just see him flying up the start finish straight. I thought he was going to get me, um, but I it it felt. I'm not sure how close it looked on the stream, but it felt really, really close. Mhm. Mm it well. It was scary. I'll say, just watch it. <laughs> just watch it, it was incredible and do you know it what was a little considering scary. you two considering you two had your little coming together in Monza as well the kind of yep. guts of the, that the two of you showed and kind of the ability and the trust more importantly that you two showed with each other was just simply remarkable and you know compared to the last well few good few weeks in Division 2 cracking race guys and cracking result Bob 25 points Cheers. final question for you matey um, yep. what are your thoughts about the Russian Grand Prix uh, I'm a fan of it. I'll be hoping 
for a podium at least. But I'll, you know, I'll be. I think I think I can win it. But I mean, with Ben and Lewis, it's gonna be hard. It's like it's never easy. I mean, this is probably one of my best tracks, and even though I expect to win, it was still I had to work for it. Like when a base was behind me, I I couldn't. Um, lose concentration for one moment otherwise he'd pit me I'd get wing damage something like that there's so many things that can go wrong at any time and it's just, that's why it, this this league's class because there's so many different people who can win <laughs> it is I think we've had about 8 or 9 this season already in pretty much well obviously not division 1 because Syke and Bingley are just being really greedy and not letting anyone else win you fucking harsh bastards um, <laughs> <laughs> can you please spread the love man I mean I'm never going to win but let someone else win for fuck's sake um, but no Bob well done matey we'll be seeing you in Russia well done 25 points thanks very um, much moving on to a base usually Fraser I'd let you have a little bit of a say on the interviews but like I said I actually now need a piss so it's a tri triple header um, literally hopefully um, no one does that to me not while having a piss. Um, right, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we move on to base um, without talking about urine. Um, well done, matey. Um, 18 points. Good comeback. You've had a few tricky races. Yourself, a few. Few incidents. <laughs> <here and> there. <laughs> the last lot no, have been to, good to, shocking. Good to speak to you again, obviously, in terms shocking. of that. It's ruined your championship chances. Uh, but you're still in it. As in it yeah. as you can possibly be when Ben has a 110-point <laughs> lead. But talk us through your race, matey. Um... Qualifying, I was a bit shocked. I obviously had no DRS at Q1, and I looked and I was like, bloody hell, Bob's a second quicker. That is just out of this world. And then everyone else started to pick up the pace, and I was like, oh, it's not too bad. Then obviously Q2 had a good run. Happy to get second uh, in the grid. Um, there's not really much to say, to be honest, apart from it's hard work. I, honest, I thought I was going to get Bob at one point. I noticed he had a bit of a, a wobble on, I think it was lap eight, and I thought he was literally about to hit the wall. Um, as soon as I started, I got one penalty. It was the case of, I don't want to get no more. It didn't quite work. Ended up getting another six seconds. Um, and then I noticed that Ben was literally catching me at least about a second a lap. So I just had to put my head down and just hope to get second as much as I possibly could um, just want to stay top five really in the championships I'm just going to do what I can to keep it be honest matey this is the way to do it um, Russia will pretty much be the completion of your first full season in RRF1 Lou um, you will now have to every single track with Finally. ourselves obviously making the debut <laughs> Suzuka and grabbing a pole if you remember what yes. debut you had there um, obviously the race ended up going to pardon the French um, if there's any French people in here I'm not apologising it went to shit uh, it was, <laughs> it, it was a horrible bit of a spin it, Russia, well, um, your thoughts on first that first race in the wet wasn't it as well so it wasn't yep. much to go by but Russia um, the only time I've ever done it is in performance and it didn't go too bad so hopefully with a decent setup, I can Hopefully go for another podium and just try and keep these points coming in just to keep my position in the championship. 18 points is how you do how you go about that. Obviously would have preferred the 25, mate, but 18 is enough for no laughing matter. Well done, bud. Cheers, um, mate. Moving on to uh, P3. I'm getting bored of speaking to you. It's fucking boring, this. Can we have someone else up here? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, ben Prime, uh, well done, matey. Um, another podium. Another podium. Um, you're proving impossible to catch, and I'm not even going to talk about your race because it was pretty flatline, really, wasn't it? You didn't really have too many overtakes. It's so just kind of got on with the job. I'm going to talk about the championship. It's mathematically possible for you to win the championship around Russia. You now surely are going to be thinking about it. Uh, if it happens in Russia, it happens in Russia. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, I'm not put too much on it. Let's get mad down and do <laughs> what I do. Then, How uh, was your race, then, Obviously, let's get back to that. Yeah, when we set out in Q3 and I'd, I'd, I was behind the, the two lads in front and they pitted on their outlap. I don't know, and I was a bit taken aback by that. And I went round and I set P1 and it was P1 for a good three, four minutes. And I thought, there's no way this is lasting. And then I dropped down to six from a bit further down than I thought <laughs> I might be here. Then on my final run, I took my front wing off and that knocked my confidence a little bit. But yeah, I didn't have the pace of the, the top two boys this weekend, not, not at all. They were really quick. I was surprised I was catching Lewis on the final stint. It was all about the final stint for me because I had this recurring overheating of the front right tyre and the mediums. 
So to gain three places while on tyres, I wasn't. I knew I wasn't gonna be particularly quick on. Was was uh, was cherished, man, <laughs> big time. Oh, we got there. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. I was looking at the alpha. The alpha uh, I forget the name. The guy that filled in for the alpha tonight. He he dropped it in front of me. Yeah, Victor Asnov. Yeah, yeah he, um... he dropped it. Didn't have the best of Grand Prix. We'll, we'll leave that there. <laughs> he, st he started well. He was 1.3 ahead of me, and I couldn't quite break into DRS because my tyres was overheating. So I thought, I'll just conserve these tyres. That's why I stayed out a lap longer than the two leaders did. I thought, I, I need them to pit on the same lap and come out still battling with one another so I can try and maybe slime my way in there. And then uh, the two Force India boys were both running hard. Uh, he came out 16 seconds behind me as he needed like over a second a lap to catch me. I thought I'll just bang everything up for a lap or two, just cover him off so he starts struggling. And then in, in doing that, I started taking time out of a base, uh, surprisingly enough. But, but yeah, I'd take third absolutely, of course I will, especially around there. You've said that pretty much on every track you've got a podium and it's this humble nature which is kind of almost coming with your championship and ine almost inevitable championship when of course you may end up falling into a wormhole and then a base or one of the other guys <laughs> winning every single race but I mean, it could happen I mean this is 2019 ladies and gentlemen there are nuclear wars going on at the moment or probably yeah. um, you're but mistaken <laughs> me for Liverpool <laughs> boy <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say well, Newcastle mate with Kevin Keegan but we'll leave that there uh, but <laughs> <laughs> got a bit further back you'll hear Ben Prime next week saying oh I absolutely hope he won't win. And then he'll just kind of like, you know, fuck up the rest of it. That wasn't what Kevin Keegan said. If he did, then we'd have problems. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Ben, another 15 points, matey. Obviously, the Russian Grand Prix for yourself next week. You haven't really had many fond memories of Russia, especially with last season. No, I An incident-filled uh, race. <laughs> yeah, that was my first attempt at medium traction. And uh, I think I butchered everybody, really. Uh, yeah, horror show. <laughs> Not, not me. You let me go from eight so, um, to second, funnily enough, mate. Um, you're going to try yeah. no traction next week, then? Yeah, you have no. to try no traction. It's, it's <laughs> mate, I'll pull out like, safety of, um... cars if I do that. <laughs> pull out yeah. fucking miracles, mate, if that's the case. That's, do you know what? You don't actually have that, a safety that's car. That's one thing that's, I think we point. need to do. Have a safety car for the whole race. No, fun that would be more. <laughs> well, it'd be more fun because it'd be more fucking crashes to be fair people don't drive exactly um, I will say though guys uh, wrapping this up then fantastic job thank you very much Fraser of course uh, putting in an absolutely stellar job tonight on commentary with me uh, really really good insight and I actually found somebody who's more enthusiastic with crashes than I am which kind of <laughs> which is kind of an incredible thing uh, great commentary guys make sure you listen back to it um I believe we're doing it. Well, tomorrow night I'm going to be doing CSR, guys, if you guys are interested in watching that, uh, from my point of view. I know a couple of people like having a watch of it, but you might as well tune in if you fancy it. That'll be at 9 p.m. British time. And obviously, then Sunday, unconfirm it. I believe Baron Kebab is going to be doing the stream. We will confirm if he's not. And obviously, if there's a replacement, we'll obviously confirm that in due course. This has been Positively Glad, along with Kenzie Retro, aka Fraser. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Of course, once again, RF1 <laughs> has just proven that this is what the world is watching. All the best. Good night.